Hello everybody, and welcome back to Two Fold Tuesday at the the normal time this time. Uh, I did not forget about any random appointments I have that I booked on a Tuesday months ago and forgot about. <laughs> but hello, welcome everybody. Happy Tuesday. Happy, like, I, I want to say start to the week because it's the first stream I've done of the week. So it feels like the start to me, even though there, there was a whole Monday yesterday. But it's, it's okay. That's a Monday. Who cares about Mondays, right? <laughs> but hello, welcome. Welcome in, everybody. I hope everyone's been having a, a good start to the week so far. I'm, I'm doing well as a person at the moment, like mentally. But physically, I am simply perishing because uh, we got another heat wave in the UK. Yay! And... Of course, with the AC not working out, my room continues to be a sauna. Yay! <laughs> and I've been uh, discovering new problems recently. Uh, last night, I was like, okay, this is the perfect opportunity. We got a cooler night. I'm going to open the window. I'm going to have my fan pointing at the window. I'm going to push all of the hot air out of my room and let some cold air get in. It did work. It cooled my room down by about four degrees Celsius. However, I ended up with about five moths in my room and also a bunch of flies. So that kind of sucked. <laughs> so I was trying to sleep last night and there was just loads of insects fluttering around in my room. And I was like, you are annoying. Can you leave, please, please? <laughs> Free friends. <laughs> they would be friends if they didn't keep like fluttering around in front of like the one tiny light I have in my room and throwing huge shadows up and making me think that creatures are moving in my room and making it so I couldn't sleep. <laughs> but then it was like I shut the window after a while because Tiffany kept scrabbling at my door and she wanted to come into my bedroom but I can't leave my window open when Tiffany is in my room because she has proven several times that if there is an open window she will try and climb out of it. Even when it's a, a second story window with uh, paving stones underneath. And she has tried it several times. She's gotten stuck on the tiny window ledges several times. We think she's learned her lesson. She never does. So now when our windows are open, like me and Xander specifically, when our windows are open, we have to have the door shut so that Tiffany doesn't go in there. Because we know she'll, <laughs> she'll end up screaming on the windowsill and we'll have to try and maneuver her off this tiny, tiny little ledge. <laughs> so uh, after a while, I, I shut the window because it had cooled down enough. I opened my door, I let Tiffany in. She thought, oh my goodness, there are so many moths in here. There are so many toys. Look at this. I can play all night. I'm going to cheer up away at them. I'm going to scream at these moths on the ceiling all night at 3 a.m., at 4 a.m. I'm going to scream at the moths. So I didn't get much sleep last night. <laughs> it's either like I dealt with her scrabbling at the door and keeping me awake or screaming at the moths and keeping me awake. It, I, I couldn't win either way. But uh, I managed to get some sleep this morning at least. Like my my mum fed Tiffany for me so I could just stay in bed, which I was so grateful for. <laughs> and as soon as Tiffany had had her food, she just went downstairs, ate her breakfast, lay down and fell asleep. So I managed to get some sleep this morning. I, I I feel like I really understand a little bit. Like, obviously not too much. I'm not going to, like, appropriate being, like, an, a, a mother to a newborn. But I really understand the pain of, like, a baby keeping you awake and just taking the sleep when you can. Like, obviously in a way, way lower, <laughs> lower intensity because it's just a cat. But... Yeah, I, I, makes me realize I would never be a parent, probably. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I immediately started yapping as soon as I start the stream. I haven't even welcomed everyone yet. <laughs> but hello, everybody, welcome. Let's go from the top. Lyra, congratulations on the first. Welcome, welcome. Brinley, congratulations on the VIP badge, the 200,000 points. I'm I'm still so amazed by that. I'm so impressed by it. I love it. And Milo, thank you for the resub for 40 months as well. 
Oh my goodness. Wait, is the text to speech not working? I need to. Well, that's working at least. <laughs> we love to hear you, yeah. No, it is working. It's just delayed. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you. But friendly, congratulations on the VIP as well. Uh, I I love like when I set this command to begin with. I was like, I don't think anyone's ever going to get to two hundred thousand points. Like I I don't think anyone is going to watch enough of my streams to get that many points. I don't think I'm going to be handing any of these badges out. And I think there have been like five or six now. Like, Lumsev ended up redeeming it when it was the half price Christmas offer, and then he redeemed it again. Because he got the points again, and I was like, how... I... Like, I am, I am so honored that people want to spend time with me and that people have earned that many points. But at the same time, I'm like, wow, maybe I, maybe I should have made it more expensive. <laughs> I'm running out of VIP badges, I've only got like two left. I only have like two VIP slots left, unless I somehow become really popular and get like 50 people chatting at the same time, at which point I will unlock more. Uh, challenge, challenge unlocked. <laughs> but, oh, you wasted 200k points first. Yeah, I remember, because I, I didn't quite believe it when you redeemed it because you kept throwing all the points into the abyss. And I was like, how have you, how have you got that many? How did you do that? But I like that. Like that? How many are you throwing away? It's amazing. Oh, I I love it. I love it so much. I, I always feel like I have loads of point redeems to like tempt people to not save them, but people save them anyway. I'm I'm very impressed. I can never save channel points. All of the streamers I watch, as soon as I get enough points to redeem a silly little thing, I'm instantly pressing that button. <laughs> I have no self-control. But yes, anyway, where was I? Caps! Video games! Hello! Welcome, welcome. I am ready to be a, a pro gamer today. A professional of suffering. Suffering compliment. <laughs> yeah, I'm so excited. I'm so excited for pain. I'm Kiro Boros. Hello, lovely to see you. I hope you're well as well. Hope you've been doing all right. I'm doing really well, like, apart from the heat. The heat has really been making me suffer at the moment. But uh, I figured out a way that I can survive so long as I have my fan pointing directly at me. <laughs> so it's like, I, I managed to set up my mic in a way where it makes my voice a little more muffled than usual, but it also blocks out so much of the fan sound. Like I've got my fan blasting pointing straight at me right now. And I, I don't think it's coming through. There's maybe a tiny little bit in the background, but I'm I'm proud of myself and what I've managed. <laughs> but yes, and Grace, no, hello, welcome, welcome. Yeah, I'm I'm so ready for some Christmas crying. I've I've been preparing for this all week. As soon as the scene started at the end of last week's stream, I was like, I I'm gonna just bask in the the happiness that everyone's feeling at the moment because I know what's coming next, but I don't know what it's gonna be like from this perspective, from this side. So I'm, I'm so intrigued to know how this is gonna go. Like, I'm very worried for Millie because Millie kind of survived last time because of Olive being there. But then we also realized afterwards that Caprice did not deal well with it. So I think this time Caprice is gonna be okay because of Olive being there, but Millie is not. And I'm a little, I feel like, how do I, how do I word this in a nice way? I feel like Millie's more volatile. <laughs> I'm, I'm more worried about Millie's reaction with her being alone, but I, I don't know. I don't know how it's going to go. That's why I'm so scared. <laughs> uh, Ryan, hello, Tuna Tuesday. Oh, maybe I should have tuna. I, oh, I should have had a tuna sandwich for lunch. Tuna Tuesday. I should have done that, but hello. And hello, Milo, too. I, I know I already said hi because you did the, the resub, but hello. Oh, I'm, I'm glad you like to hear me yap. I can't help it. I, I feel like it's something that I've developed as a skill since becoming a streamer. I used to be the kind of person where whenever I was talking to somebody, 
to to twenty four twenties day. Good luck. Thank you for the bits. Thank you for the forty bits. Two fold Tuesday times ten times ten. Nice. <laughs> but thank you so much for the bits. But uh, I what was what was I even saying? Oh yeah, I was. Uh, when b before I started streaming, I used to be so bad at talking to people. I. I became known as like the listener because I would always just listen to people. I'd be too scared to like actually speak up in conversations. I'd be the kind of person where a conversation would be happening. I'd go, ah, someone else would start speaking and I would just give up entirely. I'd just fully give up. <laughs> the listener, that's me. Oh my goodness, I'm just like, hello everybody, this is my mod squad. Thank you very much. This this is why you get the swords. This is <laughs> This is why you have the swords. You've proven you wield them with perfection. <laughs> but yeah, I, I always used to listen, but I feel like since I became a streamer, I've I've become better at conversations. And it's something I actually realized uh when I I went to visit my dad at the weekend I did like talk about it a little bit on Sunday but uh my dad's been going through some health issues recently and there was a, a period of time when I was extremely worried for him but he's doing really well now and me and Xander went to go visit him and his new wife who he married earlier in the year they eloped <laughs> which was uh it was it was both a surprise and not a surprise because they had been together for quite a while. And I think they'd been engaged for a while as well. Like, the en they'd been engaged for so long. And then just suddenly I got a message that was just like, hey, sweetheart, guess what? We eloped. <laughs> Literally just like, there was like five people there, I think. They, they went to Cornwall and they eloped on the summer solstice on the beach. And it was so nice. And then he ended up in hospital. <laughs> Like, three weeks later. <laughs> Surprise! New stepmom! It's, well, it's the kind of situation where I think because me and Xander are both very grown-ass adults at the moment, at the moment, it, why did I say it like that as though that's going to change? We're, we're not going to get younger. Why did... <laughs> I don't know. But it's like, it's it's never going to be a stepmom situation. Like... Uh, we we didn't really know her very well for the longest time as well. Like, it's it's been, like, a bit of a weird situation. I don't know. I feel like playing this game makes me feel like I can talk about my family stuff a bit more openly. Because there's a lot of stuff where, like, I've always wondered, like, do I talk about this? Do I want to talk about this? Do I want to internalize all of this and just keep it bottled up forever? But now I'm like, no, I think I think I do want to talk about it, especially because things are going really well. <laughs> also, I've gotten so distracted, I haven't even finished greeting everybody. I'm going to greet everybody and then continue my yapping, I think. <laughs> but Suzume, hello! Thank you for doing the air horns. I really like that I've added the, the air horn sound alert. I think it's going to be quite versatile in a lot of ways. And Gil as well, thank you for the, the breakfast lurk. I hope you have delicious breakfast. Thank you for stopping in. <laughs> and da da da, and Brushy too, hello. Welcome, welcome. Lovely to see you. I think I've said hello to everybody now. If I've forgotten anybody, just poke me and I'll say hi. But yeah, it's it's been really nice though, because like for the longest time, I think a little part of me was worried about intruding if that makes sense like everyone's adults we were adults Xander and I are both we've been adults for a while I'll just leave it at that I've <laughs> so with it being that kind of relationship like they didn't get together until we were in our 20s so it's never going to be like a stepmom relationship plus it's like I've, I've only I've only actually talked to her like a couple of times in all of the years that they've been together. So I didn't really know her. I was just like, oh yeah, it's just dad and uh, dad's partner, dad's new wife. <laughs> but uh, on Sunday we went to go visit them. 
Also, Raccoon Jesus 69. What an incredible username. Thank you for the follow. <laughs> welcome on in. Welcome. Welcome to the weekly yapping session before twofold devastation. But how long have I been 17? A while. Ah, <laughs> uh, do you mean your profile and banner are raccoon themed? I love that. I love that. I, I, I think that's pretty great. I love when there's like a username and a theme to go with it. <laughs> but welcome. Hope you enjoy your time here. Thank you for following. Uh, you kind of get that, but you think you could get a new mom at this point in your life, to be honest. Oh, what if I just adopt you? No, wait. No, I think that would be too weird. No. <laughs> no, it's, I'm, 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 I'm adopting you, but like as an older sister. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I've, I've adopted you as, as my sibling instead. <laughs> but yeah, it's been really nice though because we went around on Sunday, and it's the first time I've seen my dad since they eloped since they got married and it's it was actually the first time that me and Xander have had a full conversation with all of them and funnily enough I think being a streamer helped me there it helped me like be better at conversation and not just be like an awkward creature hiding in the corner the whole time and we had a really really nice time it was so lovely we went out for a meal together we had a, a carvery together I got so I got a delicious cooked turkey dinner. Um, we bonded with my dad's new wife over um, force feeding him vegetables. Because <laughs> me and Xander, like my my dad doesn't like vegetables, and he was talking about eating healthier since all the health scares. He proceeded to not put any veggies on his plate, so we started force feeding him carrots. But we did it in the style of like, you know, when you put food on a fork and then you're like here comes the choo choo train choo 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 open wide going into the tunnel that like just really playing it up and I think we really embarrassed him and it was great it was so fun it's like we got revenge for all of the times he embarrasses us <laughs> it's like oh hey remember when you used to do this to us when we were young it's our turn now wait the jet plane's coming be fast <laughs> Well, did it work? It did work! Because uh, once once we started, like, smooshing the carrots against his face, he was like, well, uh, it's more embarrassing to not eat them at this point. <laughs> so that was, that was really fun. It was a lot of fun. But uh, it was really nice, because after the meal, we just went back to their house, and they've got their whole back garden set up in a really nice way. Like, they've got a whole little sitting area with like a deck, they've got like a, a big a big parasol to block out the sun, loads of comfy seats. And they've even got like little speakers set up out there to play music. And we just sat there and talked and chatted, like opened a bottle of wine. We were all just drinking wine, talking together, having a good time. And it felt, it felt really, really nice. It felt like a bit of a shame that it had taken a big health scare for us to get to that point but it was it was really nice it would it felt very rewarding like i was exhausted afterwards i was very glad to get back home i was just like okay that that was really nice but it was also a lot but uh, i'm really glad it happened i'm it it's made me feel more confident about not intruding in their lives because like, I'm pretty sure that was my biggest worry. It was all like, well, they've started like building their own life together. Is it gonna be awkward if like we start pushing in on that? But I, do I don't think it's awkward at all. I think it was really nice. And also I got free wine and beer. Me and Xander kept trying to pay for drinks and dad was just like getting his card out. Like, no, no, I got this, I got this. Like, we, we were gonna try and treat him and he immediately paid for everything. And it was like, oh, okay, okay. I'll take it, but uh, also, okay. <laughs> but yeah, it was really nice though. It was a good time. But oh, really glad for me. Thank you, I am too. Honestly, it's like the silliest stuff has helped me. Like, I, this is the kind of stuff where I think Genuinely, I genuinely think if I had not been playing Twofold, I don't think I'd be talking about this on stream. I also don't know 
if I would have had the confidence to actually go along and do everything. As weird as it is, it's like, it's, it's the silliest thing to be inspired by, but it was just the moment of like seeing Millie and how Millie was so like against the relationship in twofold. I had a little moment when I saw that and I was like, oh, that, I think that kind of reminds me of myself. Like not to the same extent, but I was like, I'm, I'm kind of avoiding a, a family wedding situation as well, aren't I? It's weirdest, weirdest moment. Honestly, I think I played this at the absolute perfect time in my life. <laughs> But yeah, it's been so wild. It's been such a, a wild month or so. Like, July has just been all over the place. But I feel like things are getting better now. Slowly but surely. Now I just need the, the sun to get lost. I need the heat to stop and then everything will be great. <laughs> also, Mama, hello! Happy Twofold Taco Cat Tuesday! Welcome! Welcome on in. Welcome back to Emotions, the video game. Oh, it's not silly. Or maybe it is, but you're silly with me. It's like, I don't think it is silly. I think media is incredibly important and it can have a lot of impact on people. It's just for me, it's, it just feels so kind of amusing that I, I've been playing this game at like this point in my life, like with the stuff in my life mirror, mirroring so much. Like it's so different in some ways, but similar in others. And it kind of like, it, it made me realize, like a little part of me was like, I don't know how to feel about their relationship because I don't know what's going on. I don't know her. I don't know what my dad is doing most of the time. Like not through maliciousness, but because he, he's, he's like off in his own world a lot of the time. It's, <laughs> he forgets, like, I, th I think he just doesn't like have a concept of time to be honest. And he also, like, he's a bit of a workaholic, too, so when he gets, like, really wrapped up in his work, that's, that's like, the priority for a bit. But I, I always, like, I felt so awkward because I didn't know what was going on. But then I didn't want to intrude, so I wouldn't find out what was going on. So I would continue to not know what was going on. And I would feel even worse about it being longer without knowing what's going on, etc, etc. Vicious circle. So now... Me and Xander, are, uh, we pushed ourselves out of the circle. We broke out of the circle and it went really well. <laughs> but yeah, honestly, I'd, I'd really love to just have another time just going to that house, just just chatting with a couple bottles of wine. Like, <laughs> that was great. But yeah. Oh yeah, don't mind sitting in front of a fan with a water spray and an ice cream in states of undress. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but the, the problem with like streaming is I never want to put my fan on too loud because it then does become too loud and I can hear it really loudly but uh I've, I've got it at a good level at the moment I'm surviving and I don't feel like I'm gonna pass out and I also I also have this he 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 I also have this I have my Monster Energy Ultra Fiesta, the mango flavor, because it's the bluest one for Caprice. <laughs> yeah, we don't care. I know, Brushy. I know. Oh, thank you for the hydrate, Lumset. Thank you. I will have another sip then. Oh, you know what? I'll I'll have some water as well. I do I do have a bottle of water. Sorry, should I say the thing? I got a, a bottle of water. Water and monster. A balanced hydration system. <laughs> but uh, actually before the stream as well, I, I had another monster ice lolly, a little monster popsicle, because we, we made our own little monster energy ice lollies for the heat. And uh, th those have been so nice. They're so refreshing. So I had one before the stream. I was like, you know what? Cool myself down with ice cream except it's monster 
Oh, it really should go back to work now, but you'll be listening. Oh, thank you for the workload. I appreciate it. But yes, get your work done. It is important. I appreciate you being here. <laughs> yeah, oh, fan ASMR to cool me down. Yeah, it's, it's so funny, though, because everyone is always like, we don't mind the fan. We don't mind if we hear the fan. And I'm like, but, but I mind. <laughs> but I mind. I can hear it. But yeah, I think I've got it at a, a nice level at the moment because I've managed to position it so that it's blowing at me. But then my mic is slightly to the side, so it's not blowing directly on the fan. It's just me. And that really helps me to, to not perish in the heat. Although, like, I say that. Uh, does anyone want to make a guess as to what temperature my bedroom is right now? After uh, 20, 30 minutes of streaming? 29. Very close. It's 28.8. <laughs> 28.8 degrees Celsius in my bedroom right now. And I'm suffering. Oh, I'm glad it's not 35. If it was 35 in my bedroom... I would have cancelled the stream. <laughs> Wait, you, you two keep matching. I love this. Just like same brain cell. See, I'm just here like this is... This is the way I make friends. Everyone just... We all just have the same thoughts. We... we, we it's the great minds think alike situation. Ah, uh, I couldn't survive like this anymore. I... I'm... I'm only surviving because I have the fan pointing at me. If the fan was pointing away from me, I would not be able to do this. Like, I need the constant blast to survive. But I'm, I'm just waiting for summer to end now. I'm so... I'm done with it. I don't like the heat. I want it to go. Oh, but also there was a, a comment to, uh, from Suzume that I missed because I was talking about the fan. But uh, a quote I won't get because it's from Summer Unit. Yeah, I'm waiting for the full game to come out to play that. But uh, you all, you've you always showed up at the perfect time in my life. I love that. I love that quote. That's good. I'm really excited. Like, I want this summer to end. I want summer at the edge of the universe to start instead. Please. Thank you. <laughs> oh, you've had your beach episode, so summer can end now. Yes. Yeah, the, the beach episode has happened. I'm just here, like, I had the really nice time. Like, we, we sat outside, had a meal, had a chat. I had the bonding moment with my dad and his new wife. And that's... That's it. I'm good now. Can we have cold again, please? Please. I want the cold. I like the cold. I don't ever feel the cold, so... Whenever it's super cold outside, I love it. I can deal with, like, below freezing temperatures and be fine. I just put a cardigan on. <laughs> But as soon as it starts getting warm, I'm just... I'm just a little creature lying on the floor. Anyway, uh, who's ready? Speaking of heat... and summer... Who's ready for Christmas? <laughs> uh, who's ready for Christmas? I don't think I am. You're not, neither am I. I'm terrified for this. Uh, you may be able to see, I added to my screen what I think is going to be an appropriate meme for today. I do have a couple of other memes ready, if needed. Mostly about crying. But I'm really, really curious to know how this is going to go. I'm so curious. Also, before we start as well, I am going to open a can of Sprite as well. Oh wow, that was a little violent. I'm here with three drinks now. If I had made myself a, a flask of tea, I would have four drinks right now. But I didn't make the tea flask. I was like, it's, it's too warm. I'm not having a warm drink. <laughs> I've got the triple hydration though. So whenever anyone does a hydrate redeem, it's gonna be a surprise. Which one will I drink? Who knows? It's, it's gonna be the monster. It's not a surprise. It's never a surprise. <laughs> the monster is always the first one I go for. Also, Tim, hello, Meowdy. Welcome, welcome. Happy Tuesday. How's it going? You are just in time. I'm about to start the emotional devastation. <laughs> ah. I really don't feel like I'm ready for this, but I have to be. It's like the, the 
chapter's called The Big Picture. I'm so scared. I'm terrified. How is this going to go? We will soon find out. Here we go. Merry Christmas. You'll lurk now because... Yeah, yeah. That's fine. That is understandable. But thank you for lurking and thank you for the resub too and the bits. Oh. Okay. Thanks for go. the ride. Here we go. Good luck and have emotions. Oh, I will do. You, you know I will. Thank you. <laughs> Don't worry about it. I'd feel bad asking you to bike there. Yeah. I wonder if I'm the only one in this car feeling on edge. Charlie hides it well if she is, and I don't think Caprice would ever admit to it. A big family meetup like this is supposed to be a huge anxiety-ridden part of the dating process. Oh yeah, but like the meet the family's a little bit different this time. With the feud between Caprice and Millie being the way it is though, Leaving a positive impression is second to just surviving the assured awkwardness of it all in my mind. Yeah, I like that too. Good luck and have emotions. It's so good. <laughs> By the way, Caprice, what's with the present? I thought you dropped off all your gifts with me last time I came to pick stuff up. Oh. I was wondering why Caprice was traveling so light when these two picked me up. I remember Caprice buying her mom that cast iron for Christmas a while back, but the lone present sitting in her lap was way too thin to house it. What could it be? I have no idea. For a special someone, maybe? <laughs> she achieves her desired effect of having me retreat into my scarf in a vain attempt to hide myself from view. I hope I get used to the teasing, since it doesn't seem like there's going to be a stop to it anytime soon. Nah, always was in the first batch. This is actually for Millie. I was only able to pick it up and get it wrapped this morning. <laughs> I really want to bury the hatchet so we can go back to making good memories again. <laughs> Millie voice, bury the hatchet in my back. <laughs> <laughs> as well as she was able to mask her tension before, it's hard to miss Charlie's shift in posture in response to that, her shoulders perking up as if a hundred pounds had suddenly been taken off her back. Oh, the, the hope makes it so much harder. The optimism. Ah. <sighs> Me too, Olive. The car door slams shut with a thud as I do a quick stretch. It wasn't a terribly long ride, but going through this motion helps loosen my muscles as well as my nerves. I join Caprice and Charlie at the door after finishing shaking out as much anxiety as I can. A couple quick raps on the door is enough to get a response. Hi! Hi, Mike. A door slowly opens to reveal Mike. Despite our first interaction going relatively well, it's still hard not to be intimidated by that face of his. Hey. Hey. Hi. Oh, but the way they smile as soon as they see each other is all... <laughs> not as warm as I'd expect two lovebirds to be. I guess with Millie around, they feel the need to walk on eggshells. Regardless, Mike's eyes soon shift from Charlie to me. Hey, good to see you again. See, that feels genuine at least, which is really nice. Same to you. Look at you, Ollie. Just like old friends already. Yeah, at least something's going well. Oh, are you going by Ollie now? <laughs> Just imagine them just standing here, just like, yes, my name is Ollie, my favorite color's orange. Yeah, that's, that's me now. Uh, Olive's fine. <laughs> Thanks. Either way, glad you could make it. Come on in, you three. You won't get any warmer standing out there. Ah. The warmth of the house feels both comforting 
uh, both comforting and a little suffocating coming straight in from the cold. Sorry, I need to move my mic slightly. And myself. Ugh, let me sit up straight. Squeak, squeak. <laughs> Charlie and Mike retreat into the kitchen while Caprice and I place our presents down beneath the crowded tree. Caprice being a bit more gentle than I typically expect from her. <sighs> the care in which she handles her gift isn't present as she flops onto the couch, beckoning me to join her with a couple quick taps on the cushion next to her. I accept her invitation, giving the home a brief scan as I do. Despite being my first time here, it definitely gives off a nostalgic kind of vibe. Notably, however, Millie doesn't seem to be around. This couch is older than me. Whenever we'd come to visit when I was little, I always felt like I could melt right into it. Yeah, comfy couch. Oh yeah. I remember you mentioning something about knowing the Clarks since grade school. Ah, yes. It goes back way further than that. Mine and Millie's parents were best friends way before either of us were born. Our moms met in high school and were inseparable ever since. I've spent every Christmas here. <laughs> and every other holiday, too. She looks back up at the tree. Now that she mentions it, quite a few ornaments have her name on them, too. I had a vague idea of how things were falling into place already, but I didn't expect their history to be that lengthy. Just another wrinkle in this already complicated situation. Are you doing okay? Caprice inches herself closer to me, enough for our arms to be naturally touching. Yeah, it's just... Millie. I hope she actually shows up. Me too. Neither of us have had time to visit home in a while, so I get wanting to hang out in your old room for a bit, but... I don't know. Yeah. Any annoyance in her voice quickly mellows to a more somber tone. Being caught in an argument with one of your closest friends for so long must be unimaginably exhausting. On the car ride over, Caprice talked about wanting to start making happy memories. Already, the weight of this whole holiday being different from the past ones seems to be putting her down. I lean a bit into her, grabbing her hand and giving it a small squeeze. I can't imagine what this would be like if she were here alone. <laughs> so at the very least, I want to remind her she isn't. <laughs> It's so hard doing all of this after doing it from Millie's side. Like, it... <laughs> She'll be down soon, I'm sure. You've got a gift to deliver, right? Yeah. A great gift, which is gonna go really well. I don't get a verbal response like I was hoping for, but with the corners of her mouth tugging upwards, I consider the mission at least a small success. Dinner's just about ready. Oh. <laughs> I jump at the sudden bout of noise, trying to hide it somewhat by transitioning straight to a standing position. <laughs> oh, that, I feel like that's like the, the cat thing. Like when you startle a cat and then they like keep moving as though they meant to do it. Like Olive just like jumping and then just being like, no, I was getting up anyway. <laughs> Caprice doesn't seem phased, but joins me nonetheless. Mike and Charlie have made their way out of the kitchen, eyes fixated briefly on the staircase before turning to us. Finally, it smells great! Yum. <laughs> Not ready to hold back tears while at work. <laughs> oh yeah, like the, the timing of my twofold streams, this is probably like the worst one to be having like in the middle of the work days. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay, just say it's allergies. If anyone asks, it's allergies. You're al allergic to bad emotions. <laughs> As always, don't get your hopes up. I haven't been practicing much since Millie moved out. Mm. One of these days, we're going to get you to accept a compliment. 
If you ever figure out how, let me know. I've been trying for about 21 years now. There she is. There she is. There she is. Okay. Okay. Hi. Oh, it's... It's so interesting seeing Millie like this. Like, I don't know if I would notice it if I hadn't already done Millie's route. But as soon as I see her looking like this, I'm like, the mask is up. The mask is up. She, that is, she is doing her best to be a normal person in a normal family. She's doing her, like, normal family act at the moment. And it's so strange. Huh. I feel my heart catch in my throat as Millie makes herself known, and it's readily apparent that I'm not the only one, as four sets of eyes look up to find the source of the voice. She sounds as warm as her smile, but when she meets us at the base of the stairs, it's more evident that her expression is at least a little forced. Just a little bit. At least she's making an effort. It's good to see you, Olive. Keeping Caprice out of trouble? Impossible. <laughs> Wrong answer! Against all odds, everyone's concerns about tonight seem to collectively disappear as the two try their hardest to ease the tension. The music. The music. The music changes. I'm. Um, mm, her. Her. Dinner went as well as it could have. Kind words, catching up, the odd friendly ribbing here and there. There were also a lot of unsubtle pivots away from certain points of discussion as well. It's sweeping the conversation under the rug, but for the sake of the holiday, it was probably for the best. The rest of the evening has been taken up by unwrapping gifts. Caprice sits on the largest pile thanks to my additional contribution. Oh, despite what she'd say, creativity has never been my strong suit. So I ended up just buying her a cute tin and filling it with some homemade baked goods. No, but see, that's, that's a creative gift. Olive, do not put yourself down like that. That is a lovely gift. That is... How is that not creative? Like, the lack of creativity would be just like buying her a gift voucher and leaving it at that. Like, that's really nice. Aw, from her, I got a pair of otter-themed salt and pepper shakers that hold hands when put together. Oh my god. It's, it's for cooking and also Caprice. It, that, this is so lovely. Ooh. To my surprise, an additional gift rests for me under the tree. I unwrap it with overflowing curiosity. Make, making my way past the wrapping paper, I met with an orange scarf. Oh, bless. That, oh. That's so sweet. It's from both of us, though it was mostly Mike's idea. That's so sweet. He gives me a wide grin, and I give him a sheepish one in return. I am never going to be able to walk this back. Look, Olive, it's fine. You just... You just need to embrace the orange. You just have to accept orange as your new favorite color now. It's just... It, it has been assigned to you. Our individual piles start to grow as the one under the trees continues to shrink. In the end, all that remains is a thin, medium-sized rectangle. From Caprice to Millie. For the longest time, Theo and you just had orange scarf in bold letters pinned in your DMs to remember for story planning. I love that. I love that. I love it so much. It's, it's the kind of thing that would be so easy to just like write off as a little comment but i love the thought of mike here just being so genuinely oh my goodness i know their favorite color this is gonna be such a, a thoughtful gift and it is but it, 
in the most hilarious way. I love that. Uh, right, give me a second. Hold on, I gotta... Ah, uh, hold on, I'm, I'm preparing. Give me a sec. I'm ready for this. I'm... I'm ready and everything's gonna be fine. Ah! Huh. Here we go, here we go. Oh... From Caprice to Millie. Mike passes it up to her before resuming his place, standing at the edge of the couch next to Charlie. She absent-mindedly tears away at the wrapping as Caprice starts to slowly lean in to watch. Curiosity gets the better of me and I follow her lead. Millie's smile drops. Caprice, what is... Charlie and Mike circle around to take a peek. They both seem just as shocked as Millie. Hi, Brisket. Hi. Welcome. Welcome, you joined at a great time. <laughs> Hi. Hi. How's it going? Welcome to Twofold Tuesday. You are here just in time for everything to kick off. Welcome. Welcome. I hope you're doing well. Happy <laughs> Tuesday. <laughs> oh, I did not think about the... The, uh... The consequences of adding air horns as a sound alert. Oh, goodness me. Wait, what happened? Is what's about to happen? <laughs> uh, I'm currently playing twofold. I've played through one route of this already. So I've played through all of this from Millie's perspective, doing Millie's route. We are now at a really emotional part of the game, but I'm doing it from Caprice's side in Caprice's route. And... <laughs> Mm, stuff's happening, I can say that much. <laughs> but I hope you're doing well, welcome. And Mook M as well, hello, welcome. Thank you, thank you for the the very appropriate air horns. But yeah, basically what's happened here is uh, these two are fighting, but they're best friends and sisters, but they're fighting because they're their parents are getting married. Her dad is getting married to her mom. And her... Her mom passed away. And you can probably tell just by the fact they have, like, the same hairstyle here. She is... She was incredibly close with her mom. She is struggling to accept things. She's having a really tough time. And Caprice has just given her this Christmas gift of this beautiful painting of her mom who passed away. Which is a lovely gift, right? Right? The painting fully realizes itself. A woman with reddish blonde hair smiles towards the viewer, her hands clasped together near her face in a peaceful expression. I immediately recognize the style, and it's not Caprice's. Feeling my gaze shift to her, Caprice looks down towards the ground and continues. I gave Eileen a couple references and asked her to work her magic. I tried to do it myself, but I wanted it to be perfect, so I went to the best of the best. It's such a thoughtful gift. It is such a thoughtful gift. Caprice's smile softens, her ego obviously dampened by the confession. While that's one long-standing mystery solved, the other question on my mind remains unanswered. I figure that'll reveal itself soon without me needing to prompt a potentially awkward discussion, though. 
I know you still miss her a lot, so I wanted to get you this. Something brand new of her. Like, a new memory of her, sort of. Mm. Caprice speaks softly, the sincerity plain in her voice. That just makes the accompanying silence that much more painful. I thought maybe we could hang it up somewhere, together. She, she's doing her best. She's doing her best. But... I... I don't want you to forget your mom either, Millie. I wanted to prove that. But maybe with this, we can move on too? She shouldn't have said that. I know she doesn't mean it in a bad way. But that's... She did not word that how she should have. As the final piece of the puzzle falls into place in my head, I feel a chill run down my spine. I'm so sorry, Millie. Olive has also realized. That was very much not the right thing to say. Time passes in total silence, everyone waiting for any sort of response. The ring is missing. And there it is. <laughs> and there it is. Huh? Her wedding ring. Well, that's not a big deal, mm -hmm. I'm sure. And another situation of Caprice is trying her best and it's going to be taken the wrong way. Yeah, because you can tell here, like, Caprice is just like, oh, that's not a big deal. I'm sure Eileen can add it really easily. But Millie's just here's wedding ring, not a big deal, and... Not a big deal? It's part of who she was. Millie closes her eyes, transparently to push back some form of frustration, while the rest of us look on. Look, I appreciate it, but I can't accept this. I'm sorry. Mm. Huh? Hey, come on. Eileen only agreed to help with this because it was for you. People care about you, you know? Caprice attempts to playfully keep the mood up, but her voice doesn't match her face. Her smile is strained and Millie avoids her gaze completely. I don't need your club to look after me. Well, one of them has to. Uh... Millie's expression warps from its previously confused, hard to read state into one of anger, staring daggers into Caprice. Caprice, hey. Charlie's weak attempt at talking her talking down her daughter has an undertone of resignation. It's too late to put this back in its box and everyone knows it. You surround yourself with negative people and experiences and then wonder why you feel so down in the dumps. Oh no. <laughs> Ow. You aren't stupid. You know the club stuff isn't what this is about. Oh. I have no idea what this is about. You never try to explain anything. And when we do finally get you to open up, it's all a big contradictory mess. Uh, it's, I understand Caprice's frustration. But the reason why it's all a big contradictory mess is because it's a big contradictory mess for Millie, too. She doesn't... She doesn't know why she's feeling this way. It's... Oh, I... I hate seeing both sides of this. Like, I love it. I also hate it. I... Oh, <laughs> they deserve so much more. They, they all deserve all of the happiness in the world, and I just... Uh... Uh... <laughs> the volume continues to rise, even through clen clenched teeth. They're both close to breaking, and I'm dreading finding out which one cracks first. Oh, I just don't want Mom to be forgotten. Oh, I don't want this reminder of Mom because of some dumb ring! Caprice, stop it, no! Caprice, no! 
You don't mean that. You don't mean that. You are saying that because you're frustrated and I'm... Uh, Hold on a second. Hold on a second. I don't have any appropriate pain memes. I don't have a meme that portrays the pain right now. Because this is not a hurts just a bit situation. This is... Wait, actually, this this kind of... Hold on. <laughs> oh, I shrunk myself. No. <laughs> there, there. That's that's this. Right here. Right here. Right now. Right now. Right here. Caprice. 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 I know you don't mean that. Stop. Anyway. Anyway, I was trying to find a meme of just like, I'm, I'm in pain and I don't have any. I do have like a little turtle riding a skateboard, but I don't have anything to portray the, the suffering. <laughs> anyway, anyway. Oh, it's, it's so painful now because they're, they're only saying this because they're riled up. They're saying things that they don't actually mean and they're going to regret, but because of how worked up they are, they're gonna keep saying them. It's, uh... If it's so dumb, then why are we all making such a big deal about your mom having one now? <laughs> Caprice physically recoils back in anger, unsure of how to process that. Her mother keeps her eyes trained downward, fidgeting with the band on her finger. Can't believe I'm so mean. Wait, what have I done? I'm not mean. How am I mean? What have I done? Please, tell me what I've done that's mean. What have I done that's mean? I'm suffering because I want them to stop being mean. I'm making them say these things. No, in, in that case, um, you got you got to blame the writers, not me. <laughs> it's okay. They'll figure it out. They'll figure it out, I believe. Oh, it's really painful because they, they, it's like, uh, I think it's me. Okay. Okay. It's my fault. How could I do this? I can't believe I've done this. I can't believe I did this. <laughs> uh. Uh, wait, actually, I have a, like, an, an obscure meme that sums up how I'm feeling right now. Uh, this, this meme, like, this is a very specific mood. I hope everyone will understand the mood I am portraying here. This is how I feel right now. Th th this is how I feel. At the moment. And I will not be elaborating, thank you. Anyway, where were we? <laughs> where were we? Oh yeah, they're saying... Saying things they don't mean because they're... Having a time. Ha! Huh. Caprice physically recoils back in anger, unsure of how to process that. Her mother keeps her eyes trained downward, fidgeting with the band on her finger. <laughs> How can you even say that with a straight face? What's your problem? Oh, sorry. Guess it's only dumb when it's important to me. Lesson learned. It's not any easier the second time around. <laughs> I thought it might be. It's not. It's, it's kind of worse. It's kind of worse after already being through this conversation once. I... <laughs> Mom and I love you. I just want you to talk to us. And I just want you both out of my life! Ow. Ouch. <laughs> you can kind of tell from her expression there, as soon as she said that, 
she did not mean to say that. Like she said that in a moment of like frustration and everything getting too much. She did not actually mean that. You can tell she was surprised by herself saying that, but she said it now and it's too awkward to like take that back at the moment. So she's just going. And now I'm not on Millie's route, so I'm, I'm not going to chase after her. <laughs> she's got to commit to the bit. No, that's exactly it, though. It's just like she's got to be like so stubborn. She's like, well, I'm I'm playing the bad guy here, so I've got to I've got to stick with what I say. I've got to mean it. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm I I don't want them in my life. Just like trying to repeat it to herself, trying to convince herself that it's true, even though it's not. Maybe maybe I'll believe it after a few more beers. <laughs> Millie, Millie, mm. Millie hastily grabs her coat from the coat rack and marches out the door with a definitive slam. <laughs> I hope she'll be okay. Mm. Me too. Me too. I hope she'll be okay. Uh. To my side, Caprice is frozen, staring out the door that just closed. I go to reach for her hand to tell, to tell her that I'm here, but she gently pulls away and clenches her fists onto her lap. Turning my attention back to the couch reveals a totally different scene than the one that was there just minutes ago. Charlie slumps forward, her face buried deep in her hands. Oh, Aid. Mm. Mike places a hand on one of her shoulders, giving it a supportive shake. He gently picks up the piece of art that unraveled everyone's best intentions for the night. It's a beautiful painting, Caprice. Thank you. <laughs> it is! It is! It's a gorgeous painting! Uh, yeah, the, the bit that self-fulfillment needs, psychological needs, basic needs. Yeah, the, the bit is all of those. <sighs> oh, the pain. <laughs> Platonic Lab, hello! Welcome, welcome on in, welcome to Emotional Devastation. How's it going? <laughs> How's it going? Welcome. Welcome to pain. Oh, I, I keep making myself bigger by accident. Hold on. I just need everyone to know that. <laughs> I need, I need like a full image of that pain chart. Like, you know, the one where everyone always just uses like the, the one to two hertz just a bit. I need the one that's like nine to 10 excruciating. Like that, that's what I need right now. <laughs> But welcome, I hope you're doing well. Wait, I'm sure I had like... Hold on. What's this image? This this one could have been appropriate if I did it earlier, but not now. Hmm. No, wait! Wait a second, this is Millie and Caprice fighting with each other. They are both the knife and the cat here. This is this is Caprice and Millie right now. They hate it. But they're fighting. But they still have to keep fighting. Even though they hate it. The pain. Oh no, wait! I just realized I've had the perfect thing to have here for this whole stream. That's what we need. That's the one we need. That's what we need right now. That's what we need. For Christmas. <laughs> uh. Oh, you've been telling yourself this is like the dark souls of emotions this whole time. 
<laughs> it is. You're so right. You're sure. You're so right, and you should say it. The Pikachu slapping each other, crying. Yeah, it is. The the Pokemon clones fighting each other. Wait, yeah, it's exactly that. That's that's Million Capris. They hate it, but they're still doing it. <laughs> Oh my goodness, thank you for the 200 bits. Oh my goodness, consolation bits. The cheer up bits, thank you. 200 for Twofold Tuesday. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I don't know how this is going to go from now. I guess we're about to find out. Huh. Mm. Wordlessly, Caprice stands and leaves the room, slamming the door to the guest room behind her. <sighs> Incredibly out of my element and with nowhere else to go, I head to the kitchen and bury all my emotions in the waiting pile of dishes, pots and pans. As I clean, I feel my face getting hotter and tears prick at my eyes. Ooh. Gregor, hello, welcome, welcome. Welcome on in, happy Twofold Tuesday. I say happy. Is everyone happy right now? Are we having a happy time? Please, please be happy, everybody. I'm... <laughs> the pain. It's so painful because it's like... As devastating as this is, I feel like this is the kind of situation that did need to happen. Because if something like at this level didn't happen... I don't think anything else would progress. It would be the same awkward avoidance that just keeps going forever. It it kind of needed this little, this thing to like break the balance a little bit so that they can figure things out. But it doesn't make it hurt any less. Doesn't make it any easier. <laughs> I had no idea. If I did, would would I have told her to do otherwise? Could I have? No matter how I think about it, I can only come back to her. All the time worrying over this painting, talking over it with Eileen in secrecy for months. How crushed she must feel now. Wishing I could be there for her, but being pushed away still ringing clearly in my mind. <sighs> No. Uh. The day ends when Charlie quietly approaches me, my arms deep in the sink, cleaning the twice washed dishes, and offers me a ride home. Oh. Oh, isn't this car journey different to the way there? Oh. Mm. And of course, this is so different to before as well, because we were staying there overnight because we went with Millie. This time we went with Caprice. We're not, we're not staying there. We're... <sighs> it's eerily quiet. The only sound is the low rumble of the car. Houses we pass are beginning to alight with twinkling decorations. I don't really know what to do or say, or if I should do or say anything at all. Even from the back seat in the dark, it's easy to imagine the expressions Caprice and Charlie are wearing. Charlie with a stressed, furrowed brow. Caprice staring out the window, quietly fuming. Now, I don't think she's fuming at the moment. I don't think Caprice would be angry in this moment. I think she would be devastated. Like, just emotionally depressed <sighs> it's fine all of Millie's friends are there for her right now yeah there's 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 Heather there's uh there's Tanya saying it's okay Millie Caprice is an awful terrible brat child demon whatever there's Haley awkwardly going it okay it's just it's great it's great I'm gonna go well
Everything's fine. All of Millie's friends are there for her right now, just like all of Caprice's friends were there for her. And she was fine. On Millie's route. <laughs> yeah. It's the quiet that concerns me. Instead, I've been occupying myself with my phone. It vibrates again. <laughs> oh, it's Haley. Okay. We got Haley. Okay. Conversation with Haley. Going, well, that went about as bad as it could have then. God. What should I have done? You? Lamau. The writing club is dying a slow death and Millie's keeping it alive just to avoid talking about her feelings. <laughs> mm. Haley is always hard to read, but not so here. I don't think I've ever seen a frustrated, angry Haley. Maybe it was wrong of me to text her about this, but I don't know who else I could have turned to. Yeah, see, I'd be like, Haley. I think Haley would have been like my first thought of who to contact. What with the whole roommates thing. And then after that, Wallace? Because Wallace and Millie have been friends for a while. It it just might be a sore spot with like Wallace being in the club. Millie might just straight straight away just be like, not talking to him. He's a traitor. He's a traitor. He left me. Like it's <laughs> <laughs> like, what can anyone do at that point? It seems like she's really hurting. Ob, I know that. How is she gonna heal if she pushes everyone away, though? You and Caprice did what you could. <laughs> Still feels bad. There isn't really anything else that could be done here. But that doesn't stop it feeling bad. Are you doing okay? Need me to turn up the heater? I'm fine. I'm fine. You know, you know that one like sound clip where it's like an and she, she says she's fine, but she's clearly not fine. Nothing is fine. Like that. <laughs> it's it's that at the moment. Like with the the dramatic music in the background. Uh. <laughs> Suzume, how dare you? You say you're sorry for this, are you? Are you really? Are you really sorry? I don't think you are. And I'm suffering, but also I, I was thinking about that as well. I, um. Ow, ow. Everyone's fine. We're fine. This is fine. Caprice's answer comes quick, and she doesn't take her eyes off the outside passing by. It's not like they came here today intending to ruin the holidays. Each of them must have hoped for another happy memory, like it's been every year before this. I feel bad for, I don't know, both of them. And the parents. Yeah. <laughs> I just feel bad for everybody. It's, it's just, it's just awful for everyone. And everyone is so lovely and deserves so much better. <sighs> yeah. But then again, they should have known this was coming, but... You think so? You don't? Mom and Dad announced the good news to Caprice, and expect her to keep it a secret till they can break the news to Mills themselves, etc. You knew the rest. I... Yeah. Yeah. I don't think they were thinking about that. I don't I don't think anyone considered this. I feel like Caprice just thought this is a really happy thing that Millie's going to be so happy to know. So she wouldn't have thought maybe I should leave it to them to break the news to her. Mom and Dad probably wouldn't have thought that Caprice would just go ahead and tell her until they get the chance to. It's... It's nobody's fault, but it went so... so badly. A wedding is one thing. I didn't know about her mom. Mm. Whoa, seems like 
that might actually be part of the problem, her huh? never bringing her up, you know? Yeah. Yeah, that is probably a big part of the problem, huh? Yeah. I get it. I can't even imagine losing my mom. Or even my dad. He's mostly out of my life, but he's still alive. If he had died instead, would I be okay with mom remarrying? I want to say I'd be fine with it, but it's hard for me to know for sure. Emotions aren't really anything you can predict, even if they're yours. So true. So true. So true. Caprice is po probably in the same boat as me. She didn't lose a dad. She doesn't see Mike as replacing someone she lost. No wonder she's excited and Millie isn't. Yeah, the dynamic's a bit different. Maybe replacement is the wrong word, though. It's not like her mom is being replaced, right? It's a new phase in life or something. Especially considering it's been so many years. Do you think they should have had separate Christmases? I don't know if there's a good answer to that. I don't think Caprice would have wanted to do that. She was looking forward to it. <laughs> she really was. It's so devastating knowing Caprice went into this thinking she was going to fix everything. She thought she'd figured it out. She thought she'd figured out how to, like, reassure Millie and fix everything. And it did not go that way. Hmm. I steal another glance at the front seat. If there is a change in their mood, I can't see it. I know. Look, just do your best to be there for her. <laughs> Don't need to tell me that. <laughs> I'll talk to Mills. Or try to, lol. Oh, good luck. Good luck, Haley. Oh my goodness. Ugh. Yeah, that's gonna be... That's gonna be... Interesting. Okay. Yeah, I'm just glad that Haley is there at least. Like, it's... I really, really appreciate Haley so much. She is stuck in the middle of so much crap. And she's just great. She's just great. Huh. Yeah, in your mind, if you're an adult, you don't blame your parent who remains for trying to live the rest of their short life not dwelling on loss, regardless of how impactful the loss is. Yeah, but it's like, it's really easy to say that. But emotions are not rational a lot of the time. Emotions are not logical. Like, I, I can actually say it from a point of experience, and I can actually say it a bit clearer now that I've said all the stuff about, like, my dad getting remarried and stuff. When I first got the news that he'd eloped I did not know how to feel like I I wanted to be happy for them like they've been together for so long they it they they did like what was best for them I wanted to be happy but there was still a little part of me that was like genuinely devastated like not even like from a rational point of view like I I should be happy for them I I was happy for them but there was still a little part of me that was just like, well, that is like a life that I am not involved in. I'm not part of that. I didn't know that was happening. I was not involved in that in any way. And I was like, I was genuinely devastated over that. But like, as time's gone on, I've been able to be like, well, yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of irrational to be feeling like that because like, I was so happy for them. It was, it was about time, really. <laughs> And I am really, really happy for them. And I'm really glad that it was so nice and they had such a lovely time. But that didn't stop me from feeling completely devastated at the time. Like, that was just my brain. That was just my emotions. They're not rational. Like, and those are the worst kind of emotions too. Because when you are feeling upset about something and you know logically you have no rational reason to be upset by it, it makes it so much worse because then it's not just feeling bad about the thing, it's feeling guilty about feeling that emotion because I shouldn't be. And then that kind of like enhances the bad emotions. It's 
brains just suck, honestly. <laughs> brains are awful. But yeah, it's it's just, it's not the kind of thing you can like, it's very easy to be like, well, yeah, rationally, logically, it makes sense to not feel that way. But the feelings happen anyway, because the little, the little brain gremlins are in there poking away just like, you should feel sad about this. It's a good thing, but you should feel sad anyway. <laughs> feel sad, yes. Feel bad for feeling sad because you should feel happy. Yes, feel worse. Yeah, and... And they won't shut up sometimes. Anyway, I digress. Yes, emotions are not always rational. <laughs> okay. Thanks for letting me know about all this so I won't say anything stupid later. Like, I don't know, how did it go? Yeah. You know what? I, I am really glad that Olive did message Haley because that's going to make it easier for Haley to navigate the situation. Having like a little idea. Because like, I think like if Millie walked in and Haley would just be like, so do you have a good Christmas? And like Millie would just storm off to her room and cry probably. It would not be good. <laughs> so yeah, that was the right thing to do here. Phew, no worries. You're a good kid, Olive. Unless you're secretly not, you have to tell me if you have a dark history. <laughs> My worst crimes are behind me, don't worry. <laughs> they all say that. <laughs> We're here. Oh. Oh, I, I love Haley and Olive. Like, the, the banter back and forth between them is so good. Uh, uh, you unfortunately, 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 have about three of the emotional scenes in Twofold basically memorized due to how many times you've voluntarily listened to them. So every so often when I'm playing it, you get flashes of the scenes. <laughs> well, you're so welcome. Oh, I can't imagine that. I'm, I don't know if I have like the, the mental fortitude to, to go back to the super emotional scenes voluntarily. Although I don't know. Maybe, like, if I, I need a good cry at some point, I'll boot up the game. <laughs> Alright, anyway. The car stops just outside my apartment building. Guess I lost track of where we were. I unbuckle and exit the car. Wordlessly, Caprice and Charlie do the same. I meet them both around near the front of the car, huddling into my scarf for warmth. The car's heating was tepid at best, but at least it provided some protection from the ice-cold wind. Thanks for the ride. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Hey, anytime. Merry Christmas to you too. Thanks for coming. It's always nice seeing you. Oof. I'm sorry it turned out mm. so... You know, this was supposed to be a good day. You can tell how upset she is, and that that, that makes me upset too. <laughs> like, seeing Caprice upset also makes me upset. I just want the best for her. I want the best for all of them. Caprice... Mm. Caprice shakes her head. Charlie's voice falters and she just gives a soft sigh and weak smile to me instead. It's just been a really stressful few months. Yeah. For everyone. I hope you'll give us another chance next year. Yes. I'd be happy to. Mm. Good to hear. Good night, Olive. Good night, Charlie. Good night. Ma. You said it. Oh. You finally said it. They said it. Oh, they actually called her Charlie. Oh, I'm so happy. I'm so happy. It's a little devastating that it's in this moment. But they said it. I'm so proud. I'm so glad. <laughs> mm. I turn to leave and make it a few steps up the sidewalk, but... Um, hey, Ollie, wait a sec. Caprice moving in? 
Caprice move in? She turns to her mom, already halfway inside the car to leave. I think I'm going to stay the night at Olive's, if that's okay. Yes, that is completely okay. That is so okay. Yes, you, you should not be alone dwelling at a time like this. Of course. Call me if you need anything, okay? Always. I love how it was just, like, decided without Olive saying anything, but, like, Olive wouldn't have said no anyway. There's no way they would have said no, so <laughs> so it's fine. <sighs> Caprice gives her mom a quick hug, and the two exchange quick goodbyes and love yous before she rushes up the few steps after me. Hey, so I'm staying here. Yes, you are. And that is fine. So I heard. Come on in. I unlock the door to my apartment and flick on the light. Caprice is right behind me, eager to escape the cold. After discarding my winter wear and cranking the heat as high as it'll go, I join her on the couch. I'm... This is such a, such a bittersweet moment. I'm just like, everything is devastating, but also... Spending the night, yay! She sits with her legs pulled up onto the couch, making herself as small as possible and staring out the window. She's made herself unavailable to any form of embrace I can offer besides rubbing her back. Honestly though, there's, there's something very comforting about just like a, a little comforting back rub, just like, pat pat, it's okay. It takes a few moments for her to acknowledge my presence. She doesn't make eye contact with me, but she scoots a little bit closer. Are you okay? Yeah. She shakes her head. Mm, no, not really. Yeah. Do you want to talk about it? Another shake of the head. I'm just... I really wanted to have a good Christmas together. I know she did, and that's why it's so... Uh... I'm sorry. No, oh, it's... Mm. Don't apologize. Too late. <laughs> even at that, she gives me a tiny apologetic smile that just makes me feel even worse. Still, it's not about me right now. Once again, I reach for Caprice's hand, but this time I kiss her fingertips and squeeze. The move is so newly intimate, I blush a little, but Caprice looks up for the first time. Success. Oh wow, I, I wouldn't have expected that from them. Huh. Nice one. Christmas isn't over yet, and we get to spend the rest of it together. I love you. I'm going to go make myself a hot chocolate. Would you like one too? Yes. She smiles. A real one this time. She squeezes my hand back. Well, if you're already making them. Two hot chocolates coming right up. It's not long before I return, handing her a mug before I sit down next to her, going slow as to prevent spilling my own. I made sure hers was given the works with extra whipped cream and some chocolate shavings. Mine's plain, but that suits me fine. Wow. <laughs> Impressed by the extra work put into hers, she gives it a small sip. Her face lights up, which is such a huge relief to me after how the night's been going so far. Was that a good woe? I think so. It was a great woe. Thank you. She repeats the act she pulls off she, she pulled off on the clerk's couch, moving closer to me until we're touching. This time she takes it a step further, resting her head on my shoulder. 
We sit in a relaxing silence for a bit as the already dark sky outside gets even darker, illuminated only by the fairy lights I lazily strung around the window and the far more festive houses in the distance. The distraction suddenly lasts for so long when, th when things are this big. <laughs> After a few more sips, I feel Caprice shift a little next to me. She looks about ready to start crying, but instead chooses to right herself with an exhale instead, pushing everything back. Okay, yeah, in instead chooses to right herself with an exhale instead, pushing everything back. Ha! <sighs> you okay? Still no, but... A bit better now. Well, that's good. A little bit at a time, we can... We can do this. I screwed up really bad, huh? I, I don't think really bad, but no, I guess it kind of was. Mm. She rotates the mug in her hands. Part of me wants to try and steer the conversation to spare her the possibility of dragging herself through the mud again. But if she wants to talk now, then the best thing I can do is listen. I was working on it for so long. I was practically learning how to paint from scratch. All that effort just to try and make something good enough for her. I know, I know, I must sound like a big hypocrite. Normally I'd be all, it's the thought that counts and it doesn't need to be perfect. But in this case, it just... did. It had to be perfect. And it wasn't. Mm. And no matter what I did, or how hard I tried, it wasn't. I just couldn't pull it off, so I ended up asking Eileen to do it for me instead. It was such a quick turnaround, too. I felt awful about it. She really did an amazing job. Yeah, she did. <laughs> it was beautiful. I was shocked, though, if I'm being honest. Yeah. Caprice laughs a little at that, taking a minute to savor the drink. <laughs> She's a big softy, regardless of how much she tries to hide it. No, not that. I mean, you. I remember you telling me how much you hate asking for stuff like that. Yep. That's how important this was. She gives a non-committal shrug. I was so desperate for it to be good, Olive. Millie deserved it, I thought. And now? I mean, you saw what she thought of it. Not just her, either. Mm -hmm. Mom and Mike were so sad, I couldn't look either of them in the eyes for the rest of the night. Look, they weren't sad about the painting. They were sad about the reaction and the conflict. They they were not sad about the painting. That that was not the problem here. It's uh, I've never heard her sound so utterly defeated before. My heart sinks lower and lower with each passing word. I try to think of something to say, but I keep coming up empty. There's nothing about this situation that I can really comment on. All I know is that Caprice's heart was in the right place. I don't doubt that, and I don't think anyone else can, either. I just wish I could help reassure her of that in some way, but the facts of the situation aren't in my favor. I don't remember much about her. <laughs> hmm? Millie's mom. It's not like we were toddlers when it happened, but, like... Do you remember everything about your childhood growing up? Yeah. Lots of stuff slips through the cracks, yeah. Mm. Yeah, and as close as our families were, I still didn't see her every day or anything. I don't remember much. I only ever remember her being kind. And I remember how happy Mom was whenever we were around Millie's family. But it's really hard for me to think of specifics. And that's gonna be why... She didn't talk about her much because she didn't have the memories. But then, Millie being Millie, I don't think she would bring up the memories out of nowhere unless she was prompted. And I don't think Caprice would want to prompt in case it was upsetting. 
So then that falls into a cycle of just never talking about her. And then when the marriage gets announced, it, you can understand both sides so well. And it's so painful. <laughs> She takes a sip of hot chocolate, trying to piece together her next sentence. Then she takes another. I remember other things clearly, though. I remember Millie crying. I remember hugging her as tightly as my little arms could. I remember falling asleep with her on the couch, nestled between Mom and Mike. Oh, mm. Maya, hello! Welcome, welcome! Oh, I would have been here early, but you had the EP. That is... So understandable, don't worry about it. I hope you got some good sleep, though. But uh, thank you for being here. Welcome. Yes, you... I, I was going to say, yeah, you came during an emotional time, but I think this whole stream is going to be an emotional time just because of where we are in the story. Everything is emotions. <laughs> but welcome, welcome. Happy Twofold Tuesday. Merry Christmas. Things are great. Everything is fine. I'm, I've only cried a couple of times. <laughs> hmm. But Caprice is actually opening up now, which makes me really happy. Because, I don't know, it's like, as open as Caprice is, I feel like she's still very closed off about, like, the serious things. Like, she's the type to talk non-stop about, like, happy things and distract herself and try and like avoid the heavy conversations so the fact that she is opening up now I'm really glad I'm really glad she is that she feels comfortable enough to do that another sip slow and deliberate those were the things I was thinking of when I started on that dumb painting I'm out of ideas especially if she won't actually talk to me it's not a dumb painting there's a level of contentment in her resignation that breaks my heart more than if she were to simply sound sad about it. Yeah, I don't... I don't want her to give up. And it's like, because thinking about Millie's route too, like, this is the point where Caprice kind of just gave up. This was where she gave up on pushing and trying to fix things. She just... had... She's so deeply into this moment of, like, I've tried to fix things so many times, and I've just made them worse. Therefore, I should give up. I should stop trying to fix things. Because I will keep making it worse. It's, I don't like seeing her like this. I don't like seeing her like this. There's always a plan B, even if you haven't thought of it yet. Yes. The painting was like my plan Q. Then there's a plan R. Then you still have a good yeah. amount of the alphabet left to go. Yeah. Maybe. Yes. If someone like me can believe that, then surely there's some sort of spark in you that can too. Yes. <gasps> oh. Oh. Don't forget the Greek alphabet. True. Also, you can do the thing that like mobile games do when it gets to like thousands and stuff and you can start going like W, X, Y, Z and then you go A, A and then you go A, B and then you go A, C you can just keep going forever you can just have plans forever it's fine never give up never surrender <laughs> after a small sigh she lifts her head up for a moment only to remove her hat and rebury herself in my shoulder wiggling back and forth a couple times to make sure she's as deep in as she can get I've got to say, like, I really love the animation that happened here. If if I like, scroll if someone back, like me, we see it again. Yes. Take the hat off. Do a little rummage. Nestle in. <laughs> uh, I love it. <laughs> Just plan G extreme. Plan Q savage. Just got to keep going. It's okay, just gotta, just gotta grind a bit and then go back, and then you'll clear the raid. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Thanks for listening to me whine all night. I know it's not the best way to end the holiday. No, it's such a... It's such a heartfelt moment, though. It's... 
I don't know, there's something that feels so meaningful about opening up to the person you love. It's like, <laughs> just Olive, you can always use a gacha style alphabet. Caprice, oh, I can't not marry them. <laughs> no, I love that though. Yes. Never run out of letters, it's fine. I, it's such a, it's just like, like the end of act two for Millie as well. That was also the most bittersweet moment. It was so bittersweet. Like it was really nice because they finally got together, but it was after all of that. This is the same. It's like Caprice is actually like opening up, talking about her feelings. They've, they're so close now and you can tell how much they care about each other, but, but at what cost? <laughs> it's fine. Like I said, we're still spending time together in the end. Yeah, they're together. Yeah, this is nice. Yeah, what if you just don't leave? I lean in, resting my head against hers. We stay like this until both of our cups are empty, and for a bit longer besides. Eileen. Oh, that's... <laughs> the next day. Oh, oh, okay. The morning already started off on a bad foot. Oh no. Oh, okay. Literally, with my foot cramped up and my neck sore from sleeping on the couch. Oh, I was worried. <laughs> oh my goodness, I was so worried then. Caprice was the same. As comfortable as we were drifting off, neither of us wanted to commit to sleeping in bed together or separating. So they went for the worst option. I see. I see. Yes. And just like, oh, we, we can't sleep in the same bed together. Yeah, that's too, too much. But just just be comfortable, you silly, silly people. I love them. <laughs> Even without that, it seems like sleeping on it made things worse. Caprice has been checking her phone nonstop, staring blankly at her contacts list and refreshing her text messages. Oh, yeah, like... Mm. The morning after the big conflict, the big worry... Uh, yeah, they didn't want to separate or sleep in the same bed, so they chose never-ending pain and agony. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Just be like, well, we can't sleep in the same bed, but we can sleep on the same couch uncomfortably. Like, w flawless logic, honestly. Impressive reasoning. I excused myself for a quick shower, and she still slumped a bit on the couch, waiting for a text message that probably won't come. But now, rummaging around my fridge and cabinets, I realize I haven't been grocery shopping lately. I kick myself a bit for not preparing better. As good a full breakfast would be for both of us, it can't be helped. Anything you want to do today? We have the whole day to ourselves. Mm. You want a distraction? They can do that. Mm. You wanna go dye our hair a crazy color? Yes. I don't know what answer I was expecting. Definitely not that. Uh, <laughs> I think I'm good. I was thinking more like going out somewhere to eat. Oh no, but like, imagine... Imagine Olive with orange highlights I don't know if I can imagine it actually hmm Ugh. <laughs> yeah where's your sense of adventure Olive catching herself by surprise she finally finally looks up from her phone guilt written across her face she flails her hands as she continues oh gosh sorry that wasn't because of you I just I was just joking. I don't really feel oh. like going out at all right now. I'm okay skipping breakfast. I'm not really hungry. No, you gotta eat. You have to eat, Caprice. 
She folds back into the couch. Before she can go back to her phone without thinking, I grab a skillet pan off the stove. Oh my, wait, cooking lesson. Cooking lesson. Cooking lesson? Cooking lesson time? Um, it's okay. I have enough for some omelets at least. Egg. Egg. Yes. Do you want to help? Egg. Yes. Uh, I can imagine them with green highlights pretty easily. No, honestly, like, I could imagine, like, a... Like, a more, like, darker, foresty green kind of, like, tipped hairstyle. I think it would suit them well. I wonder what they'd look like with pink hair. No, I can't imagine pink hair. She stares at me, unconvinced. I think it's probably better if you just do it. No. Maybe. <laughs> but I do owe you a cooking lesson. <laughs> Unless I should just consider that debt forgiven. Yes, they know the perfect way to convince her. <laughs> Caprice takes an extra minute to think it over. I wiggle the frying pan as enticingly as I can in her direction. <laughs> How would you enticingly wiggle a frying pan? What kind of wiggle would that be? Like like a flipping motion? Like flipping a pancake or an omelette? Or just like an actual wiggle, like a worm? They'd probably do both. They'd, they'd just move it in every way. <laughs> we both know how ridiculous I look right now, and thankfully, it's enough to crack a smile on her face and make her pop up from the couch. Whichever is most enticing. I'm thinking like a snake, like a, a really big, like, left-right wiggle. That, that would be the most enticing frying pan wiggle to me, I think. <laughs> okay. The last one barely counted, so you owe me double. Yeah. Not how that works. It is now. Triple. <laughs> yes, ma'am. That's what I thought. The smell of cooked eggs filling the kitchen is nigh overwhelming. Fold it. Ah, uh, ah! Uh. No, no. <laughs> More like... You do it! <laughs> she thrusts the spatula in my direction, letting go of the pan in front of her and immediately taking a step back. I take it and try to salvage the current mess. It's definitely not an omelette. The eggs have stuck to the pan, and the uneven flipping have made it more like a half-cooked scramble. It's not burnt, at least. I add a bit more milk for fluffiness, and after a couple more moments, scrape the finished scramble onto a plate next to the other misfits. You're doing fine. Don't worry. We can try again. Look, it's like you could have burnt them. You could make them inedible. They are still edible. Scrambled eggs is still cooked eggs. Uh, this was stupid. What a waste of eggs. How many are even left? Like four out of the entire dozen? It's not a waste. Mm. Her voice is uncharacteristically angry, but her face is red with embarrassment and frustration. She wipes her face, refusing to let any tears fall. See, this is... Because Caprice is a perfectionist, I think. I get the impression that Caprice is, like... She's so used to being able to do things that if there's something she can't... get the hang of, she's gonna be mad at herself for not being able to do it perfectly immediately. <laughs> I'm not just saying that because I'm like... Well, I'm, <laughs> I'm not just saying that because I... I relate to it and I can see a bit of myself in her, um... Anyway, we have gone through most of the eggs. 
mo- none of the omelettes have really come together for her, like the first one I made as an example, but they still look delicious. Capybara shorts, hello! My face looks like a face. I'm so glad, thank you. <laughs> I would hope it does. Because it is a face. But uh, welcome, welcome. <coughs> welcome on in. Oh, and thank you for the follow too. How's it going? Any toaster fans in here? What, like the like the kitchen appliance? I really like my kitchen appliance toaster. It, it makes good toast. <laughs> but uh, welcome on in. The bread god one, I'm afraid I, I, I'm not sure, if, I'm still not sure if you're referring to a physical toaster or not. If you're not, I have no idea what it is. <laughs> but uh, welcome, welcome, we're, we're teaching Caprice how to make an omelette. The kitchen, oh you are, yeah, yeah, I, I do like toasters. They're very good, very good for both toast and crumpets. Oh, but th <laughs> thank you for throwing a dinosaur nugget at me. <laughs> But uh, welcome on in. Hope you enjoy your time here. Welcome to um, the aftermath of emotional devastation. I hope you enjoy your stay. Oh, and thank you for the hydrate too. Let me have a sip of my monster. Because hydrating with caffeine is definitely <laughs> the right hydration. Um. Having a sip. You are the god of water. Oh, so the toaster is the god of bread. You're the Yay god of the water. Caffeine. Yay for caffeine! Jack, hello! Thank you so much for the tier 2 resub for 28 months. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much. Welcome. Anyway, I feel like monster counts for hydration because the very first ingredient on the list is carbonated water. Therefore, it is water. You heard it here. Monster energy counts as water, don't worry about it. <laughs> All the months, it's so long. 28 months is such a long time. Thank you for sticking around for so long. I hope you're doing well, happy Tuesday. Uh, tomorrow you're going to England. Do I have any tips? Uh, I don't know. Um, what tips would I give? Uh, probably... I feel like, like, the biggest tip I would do is, like, if you don't want people to just, like, get a bit annoyed at you, don't do the whole, like, All right, governor, it's Tuesday, innit? Have a bottle of water! Like, if you do that, anyone's just gonna, like, deadpan stare at you. They're not gonna be impressed. <laughs> that is That is my only advice. And also, it's incredibly warm. There's a heat wave in the UK at the moment, so... Um, look after yourself. Remember to hydrate. <laughs> Stay cool. Don't, don't pack very, very warm clothes. Because it's extremely warm. But yes, keep hydrated. I feel like that's just a good travel tip in general. To look after yourself, to stay healthy. Uh, eat food, drink water. <laughs> also, Dima, hello. Thank you for the posture check too. Let me have a big stretch. Ooh. Big stretch. But uh, oh, don't ask for English muffins. They're just muffins. There, hold on. I need to English muffin. Oh no! If you if you want an English muffin, you'd probably you'd still have to like specify an English muffin because I think like recent times mostly. Uh, if you mention that you want a muffin, people are going to think you mean like a chocolate chip muffin. They're going to think you just mean like, like a dessert muffin. I've, I've, I'm trying to think. I feel like people usually just say like a breakfast muffin. Because we usually have them as a breakfast thing. It's If you ask for a breakfast muffin, you'll get an English muffin. If you just say, oh, I'd really like a muffin right now, it'll probably be like a chocolate chip one that people immediately think of. But yeah, yeah, I, th I think I think the term I hear the most is just breakfast muffin. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's an interesting thing as well that I didn't really think about. Okay. Oh, you've been pivoting towards that here too. Yeah, th 
I think you just call them English muffin. Yeah, I, it, it makes sense, like, calling it an English muffin and not England. But I think it's not, like, really a big problem. If you asked for an English muffin here, people would know what you meant. But they'd probably just be like, oh, breakfast muffin. <laughs> if you know what I mean. Also, that was a lot of cheese. But I will say as well, um, I, I know the emotes are fun to drop on my head, but please don't spam too much because that is one of the main chat rules. I If you do keep spamming, I I will give you a little warning please please don't flood the chat just with emotes even if it is fun to see them fall on my head thank you very much right anyway back to the omelets see how this is going yeah not of the omelets have really come together for her like the first one i made as an example but they still look delicious yeah they're still cooked eggs edible cooked eggs that is not a waste Let's just eat. It's fine. No. She's she's so defeatist at the moment. She just wants to give up. It's like she's made the decision in her mind that she's giving up on reconciling with Millie. And she's kind of just keeping that attitude. She's keeping the attitude of just like, I'll just give up. If I can't do it, I'll just give up. And that's like so not like Caprice. Caprice is like one of the most stubborn, persistent, like I will make this happen kind of people. So seeing her like this is genuinely devastating. I don't like it. Huh. Uh, also, you can cut them up into little cubes and use them for fried rice. Yeah, that's so true. Use the eggs and make egg fried rice. It's perfect. But yeah, poor Caprice. Yeah, that's. I think that's the part that hurts the most. Like if she was like this normally, it wouldn't feel as bad. But Caprice has always been so determined to see things through. Like, one of her biggest, like, character traits, really, is, like, the fact that she is persistent. She, when she gets her mind set on something, she keeps going. She goes for it until it works out. So seeing her give up so easily is just like, no, no, I don't want to let you give up. No, you can do this. Okay, good. Okay, never mind. Good. Despite her words, she's already cracking two more eggs into a bowl. She whips up the omelette quickly, stirring with all her pent-up frustration. I put the spatula on the counter next to her silently. While she turns to grab another plate, I put the heat on the stove down a tiny bit to account for the pan already being pretty hot by now. It's just eggs. They taste the same no matter what they look like. What's the difference if it's all soft and fluffy and perfect or messy and scrambled and terrible? Yeah, you don't mean that. I know you don't mean that. I know you don't mean that. You're just frustrated. But it's okay. Yeah, it's just like a microcosm of how Millie feels. I know. I know. It's so painful. It's so painful. They're both so stubborn. They are both so incredibly stubborn, and that's why this whole situation has ended up the way it has. Because they both are so convinced that the other person is doing the wrong thing, that they're not recognizing themselves too, and the effect that might have on each other. And they're not going to because they're both so strong-minded. That's, that's why it hurts. Ha. Huh. The butter sizzles in the pan, and she swirls it around with the spatula as she adds a tiny bit of milk to the egg mixture with her other. Grumbling, she pours the mixture into the pan, and on this attempt, she waits. She stares at the mixture, brows knitted in concentration, until it begins to yellow and bubble up. Yeah, I think she was, like, frustrated and rushing through before, which is how they keep ending up being scrambled. Now she's thinking about it. Uh, also, you just realized the little sticker in the top left. Yeah, I found it partway through. And I was just like, I can't believe I forgot I have this image. One of the, the classic images in my reaction images slash memes folder. <laughs> it felt so accurate. Oh, with a slow, deliberate motion, she traces underneath the omelette to make sure none of it's sticking this time. 
Then she tilts the pan forward as she flips the top half of the omelette over on itself. She covers it with a lid. Counts to a full minute. 58, 59, 60. Is it done? Looks like it. Here, can you scoop it onto the plate? Okay. Does it look okay? No, she did it! Looks perfect. She did it! Oh, I'm so glad. You're just saying that. No. Do you want me to find criticism? <laughs> she hesitates, looking at the plate. The omelette is fluffy. The minced ham dots the surface with color, and the cheese is melted beautifully. Well, when the pro chef says it's good, then I guess it has to be, huh? Yes! And you better believe it. You better believe in yourself, Caprice. Otherwise, I will be very cross. Omelette de fromage. Let's eat. A plus for you. Hee. <laughs> Hee. She perks up at the genuine grade for her work. She bites her lip a bit, and tired as she looks, she's flushing a bit with pride. Oh. I can't help it. I give her a little kiss on the cheek. We bring all the undercooked, overcooked, misshaped, and broken omelets to the table for our second feast in the last 24 hours. Oh, I'm so glad. Mmm, it smells so good. I also really like that this scene kind of proves that Caprice isn't giving up. Like, she's saying it. She's saying the words like, well, I can't do it, I'm giving up. But her actions are going against her because she was immediately like right in there making another one. Even though she was saying, well, there's no point. She's still doing it. So that means she hasn't given up. She, she hasn't given up. Like, I don't think she could anyway. She's saying it because she wants to, but she's strong. She's strong, and I believe in her. Mm. She breathes in the spiced coffee from her mug. It was a gamble, knowing her, but it seems like I put enough sugar and cream into it to make it palatable. Yeah. It's very Christmassy. Yeah. Oh, I really like having, like, spiced things at Christmas. Like, getting, like, mulled wine and stuff. Spiced wine. and it's... Something feels so Christmassy about it to me. Can't believe it's already come and gone. Yeah. The build-up always feels the longest, huh? And then it's over. Until next year. It's worse when you're a kid. December used to feel like it lasted an entire year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I get that. Mom would always try to be sneaky about presents, always asking me what I wanted without actually asking. For most of my childhood, I spent Christmas alone with her. That was if she got work off, and she always tried to. Oh, mine too! Hey. She giggles. I'm glad we can share memories like this. She tried to hide them over at the Clark's place uh, so I couldn't find them. But I wised up to that. Did you find them? Did you spoil your own surprises, Caprice? There was a year I tried to get Millie to help uh, me search. We looked all over, but we got caught before we could find anything. Ah, the Clark house always felt so big. So many places to hide. <laughs> them having two whole floors blew my mind as a kid. Aww. I can't help but laugh at her nostalgia-induced frustration. I guess it's something a lot of people would be able to relate to. My mom always hid stuff in the same place. After we moved to the apartment, at least. I think trying to peek is more fun than seeing what's in there. Then you ruin Christmas morning. Yeah, I feel like the, the perfect spot is like having a look, trying to find the presents, but not actually finding them. <laughs> Because then the surprise isn't spoiled, but there's still the fun of like, oh, I wonder where the presents are. Oh, have you moved a lot? A few times, yeah. We used to celebrate with my dad and grandma when I was really young. After they divorced and we moved out, mom always made sure to decorate the place to make it feel extra special. Oh, that's so nice. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't know. 
I shake my head. There's a bit of a somber feeling in my chest as I recall that far back. The big, beautiful tree packed to the brim with presents, the smell of pine sap and a home-cooked meal. It's quickly put into perspective when I remember all the shouting, all the fighting. No fighting! Has it always been just you two? I don't know how long ago it was that Caprice asked me that question. In all the ways that it matters, it has been. I'm happy it happened. My mom's a really, really great mom. Yes, she is. Mm. My grandma thought they should just work it out for my sake. No. I can't imagine how hard it must have been. She still says she feels really selfish for it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't think, like, the, the stay together for the kids approach ever really works. Like, if, if a relationship is not working out, I feel like it's genuinely not good to, like, keep pushing it. In that kind of situation, like, only my, my personal thoughts, of, of course. Like, a lot of this is just, like, me yapping, like, my, my personal thoughts. <laughs> But uh, whenever I think about the whole, like, stay together for the kids thing, it's just... Kids are very perceptive. Kids are always going to know if something is up. Even if you try and hide it, even if, if you try and pretend everything's okay, you're just like, well, just wait until they're adults. Kids know. Kids know that kind of thing. And I feel like there can often be... Like... Completely unintentionally, of course, but there can always be, like, a little bit of resentment there for things, like, having to be dragged out so long. And that's not healthy for, like, anyone involved to have those kind of feelings. Like, sometimes a relationship doesn't work out and it's better off for all sides that you don't try and push something that's not working well. It's like, uh, when my parents first split up as well, like, they, they both sat me and Xander down to tell us that they were splitting up and I think they were surprised that we weren't surprised <laughs> like we took it very well because we kind of could tell that their hearts weren't in it like that, that we, we're not we weren't stupid we, we knew something was going on but I they thought they were hiding things so well so the fact that we were like okay yeah that makes sense kind of surprised them a bit I think <laughs> but uh, I've got to say like I've I always got like very lucky like even though my parents did divorce uh there was never any never any like animosity there there was never any like super negative emotions and I've there was never any situation of like one side trying to turn the other side against us. It was very much just like, yeah, it just didn't work out for us. But you should still have a relationship with both of your parents. Like it was, it was really healthily, <laughs> it was a really healthy divorce. <laughs> so that was really nice at least. But uh, yeah, it's, it does change a little bit though, because me and Xander were like adults, late teens when it happened. So it's it's like it's going to be different with a child because children like it, it's always going to be harder to like fully take something like that in because like the emotional maturity for a start it's it's difficult <laughs> it's difficult even as an adult like as as a child too it's even more but uh but yeah I got I got like I I think it was for the best for them that they did split up. But yeah, I was just always very lucky that there was never like, never like that bad atmosphere. Like, well, I, I don't know. Like there wasn't any like shouting and fighting and like horrible behavior. <laughs> that makes sense. Uh, oh, your parents broke up very aggressively when you were five or six. Oh, that, oh, that's painful. It's painful, no. You're a balanced adult, though, you promise. <laughs> nah, it's... I, I feel like it gets easier to, like, deal with things. The older you get, like, the more life experience you get. You can put things into perspective a bit more. But, uh... But, yeah, I, I think it's... It's the kind of thing where... If a relationship is, like, 
if it, if it's deteriorated to that point where you're arguing and shouting all the time, you shouldn't try and stay together for the kids. Like, if that's the only reason you are together, that's not healthy. That's not good. That's not a good relationship. <laughs> but, uh... <sighs> but I can understand this too as well, because it's just like... The whole, like, the grandma, like, you should work it out because you've, you've got a child. Like, that's going to be, like, a generational thing as well. From the, like, the older generation being like, well, you've dedicated your life to this person, you stay with them for life. I think it's become a bit more normalized nowadays that, like, if something isn't working out, it is okay to end a relationship as opposed to, like, just struggling through it for eternity. Which is a bit better, I think. But yeah, it's just... Emotions are always hard. I've always been proud of her for getting out of a bad situation to find her own yeah. happiness in life. I think, in the end, I prefer those memories of us celebrating in our cramped one-bedroom place more than anything else. Yeah. Those are the special memories. Yeah, spending time with mom in our place around this time was always really cozy too. Yeah. Like a special kind of warm. Mm-hmm. I'm going to miss that place. She'll be moving oh. in with Mike after they get married. Last I heard, she's already started packing. Oh, so that's gonna be hard for Caprice as well. Mm. Ah, I never considered that. I see. I grew up there, you know? Yeah. I give her a bit of a nod of understanding. I can't relate entirely, but I've never been able to forget my childhood home and all the memories there either. No, oh, but don't get me wrong. I'm happy mom's yeah. marrying Mike. It's like you said, I really want my mom to pursue her own joy for once. And I'm excited that our family is growing. Yeah. I wish Millie understood that this is just the family we've always had coming together. But uh, the whole idea of like getting remarried moving into the same home. I can fully understand why Millie, Millie would feel like that's like a replacement situation. Even though nobody would consider it that, she's still gonna have that in her head, just like, well, well, that, that used to be like the bed that my mom shared with my dad. This is the house that my mom lived in with me. Just all the, the little things, I, 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 I get it. <laughs> I guess her perspective on it is a little different. Yeah, oh, there are... There are so many motorcycles around here that just decide to rev up right outside my window and it is so distracting. <laughs> I don't even have the window open and it's so loud. Like, I, I don't know why they do it. Like, this is the most boring neighborhood. Like, why, why are you like revving up your engines around here? There's, there's nothing. <laughs> Looks like it. We eat in silence for a moment. I was hoping yesterday wouldn't come up so soon, especially with how well the morning's been going. But I suppose it was inevitable. I'll miss it. Mm. Honestly, I miss it now. A lot of the time. Yeah. She pokes at the last bits of her scrambled eggs. <laughs> Susan May, bum. Bop you on the head with my hammer. <laughs> but not like the ban hammer, just a gentle hammer, like a squeaky hammer. <laughs> to be like, how dare you? Also, I expect it. <laughs> Very true though, it's so true. Feeling something big over something small. It's all so quotable and relatable. More and more lately. Mm. I should probably go visit mom before she moves out of the place. Actually, I had planned on going back with her yesterday before the sudden change oh. in plans. Yeah. Hmm. Inflatable hammer. Wait, yeah, the, the massive ones. The huge inflatable hammers. Yes, one of those. <laughs> uh, I'm tripping all over myself this morning. Last night was really nice. I don't regret it for a second. 
Oh, she feels like she has to clarify everything she says now. Uh, she feels... It's so painful because, like, because of all of her words getting so misunderstood, every time she says something that could be interpreted in a different way, she's constantly just being like, I didn't mean it like that, I meant it like this, and uh, it's kind of sad. You're fine. I get it. Mm -hmm. She must still be distracted over how things went yesterday. I could never blame her for that. I think you should definitely take that trip soon. Sounds like it'd be good for you. Yes. Mm, yeah, I'll give it some thought. She's not too far, but it might have to be an overnight trip. Mm. Well, that should be fine. Still some time before school starts up, right? Right. Yeah, plenty of time. She goes back to her food, taking another forkful. We can take today a bit slow, though. Yeah. <gasps> oh! Act three. Two-point perspective. <laughs> we did it. We did it. We finished act two. We're starting act three. Here we go. We did it. First and foremost, I hope everyone had a great holiday. Hi, everybody! Art Club reunited. <laughs> Caprice! Yay! The Art Club! Oh, it feels nice to see them all again. It's so nice. Caprice stands at the front of the table while the rest of us clutch our various caffeinated drinks. Don't mind if I do. <laughs> There's only a couple of weeks before the semester starts, but Caprice has scheduled a handful of meetings between now and then. With everything that's been going on lately, this one, uh, this one almost dropped off my radar. If Caprice didn't send me a flurry of texts this morning, it most likely would have. My family and I went camping. Nice. He closes his eyes, brow furrowing, reminiscing about something I don't want to even imagine. I'd die camping out in the snow. I'm jealous. Of course she is. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Allison's expression is so downtrodden, she'd give a depressed kitten a run for its money. Eileen's quick to notice, looking more than a little flustered as her eyes shift away. Not not like you d didn't enjoy your Christmas together, yes? Uh, well, you know, our low-key holiday was pretty nice too. Yeah. <laughs> love blushy Eileen, me too. I, I love whenever she, she like blushes and looks away and it's just like, well, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not, no, it's fine. Everything's fine. <laughs> little smile. I love these two. They're so good. I'm glad it sounds like everyone enjoyed themselves. Yeah. Caprice's shout refocuses the conversation back towards her. But the new semester is just around the corner. Yeah. Yet here we are playing school. We don't want to sit around doing nothing. We really only have one semester left, so we gotta hit the ground running. Hmm. One vote for sit around and do nothing here. <laughs> Thanks, Wallace. Second. Maybe it's just because of how much time we've spent together recently, but for some reason, everyone else seems oblivious to Caprice's forced laugh. She looks a bit off rhythm compared to usual. I haven't had time to do much of anything even tangentially related to drawing. I could do with the practice. Yeah. And Allison will back her up too, right? Yeah? I give her a smile and she returns one in kind, though hers is tinged with a small amount of sadness. I guess I'm in a similar boat. Mm -hmm. At least Allison is showing some remorse over it. The season keeps me busy. Lots to do. It's 
hard to get much of anything done when your day starts in the afternoon. Yeah. Eileen responds to Allison's pout with a small smirk. The two share a small back and forth, but I'm too focused on Caprice's tapping fingers to really listen in. Anyway, that's three to two, majority rules. We need to get back into the groove, and a club environment is the ideal place to do that. Yes, it is. Did you have anything in mind? Or... Oh, yes, one second. Ooh. Caprice pulls out her phone and begins scrolling through it. Ordinarily, she'd be prepared for this. She's always been quick to rebound, but the holidays are clearly still weighing her down. She's aware of it, too. She frowns as she mutters under her breath, trying to find whatever it was she had in mind. Sure, let me just break out my easel and brushes real quick. Eileen, please. Aw, don't be like that, Eileen. Another forced laugh from Caprice, this one decidedly more strained. Come on! We all gotta stay on top of our game if we're not gonna fall behind next mm. semester. Oh, it's so awkward. Uh, I'm not used to the art club feeling this awkward. I'm just saying, we don't need even more meetings over break. I'm getting more than enough practice. Or did you forget that huge project you asked me to crunch on already? No. No. I guess... I guess Eileen does not know the details. Otherwise, I don't think she would have brought that up. At least I hope she didn't know the details. Oh boy. Caprice's face falls. Allison gives Eileen a playful shove, laughing. I thought it came out really nice. For something that basically came down to last minute homework, you mean? Not your best work, huh? This is not what Caprice needs to hear right now. At all, in any way. Guys, can we focus? Jump in a lake. I did the best I could with what I was given. Miss President was the one who waited until the week before to ask me for help with nothing but puppy dog eyes and some blurry pictures. going back where it should be. This is its home. This is where this lives forever. I never should have removed it in the first place. This belongs here. <laughs> okay. Yeah, they really probably should have been at least slightly informed on the situation before this meeting, I think. Ha. Huh. Ow. Hey. If you didn't want to do it, why did you? <laughs> Entire club about to get a lesson at wrong place, wrong time. Yeah. Mm. Everyone turns back to Caprice, finally noticing her. Her voice isn't loud. It isn't even angry. Even though it comes as barely a whisper, it feels like the temperature of the room drops. Not just the painting, but that, too. Like, why did you all bother coming all the way out here? If you didn't want to be here, you should have just said so. Oh, no, Caprice, it's not... I'm going home. She pockets her phone and shuffles the papers on the desk into a neat pile, grabbing her things. 
The other members at the table look at her, speechless. <sighs> yeah, like, I love how you can see everyone is just instantly worried. And it's like, this is always, like, the relationship they've had. Like, nothing has changed here. This is the kind of, like, banter they would always have. This is the, the kind of back and forth that is just, like, normal for them. And if the situation wasn't what it was, Caprice would just, like, laugh it off and it'd be fine. But they don't know. They don't know everything that went down over Christmas. It's becoming incredibly obvious right now that they don't know anything about what happened over Christmas. So how could they know to act differently, or at least, like, slightly more tactfully, if they didn't know there was a reason to in the first place? Ooh. Ow. I want to yell, shake one of them, ask them to say something, but Caprice is already leaving. Caprice, wait. Move, Olive. Okay, but... She pushes past me and out the door, not stopping to wait for anyone. Damn it. I grab her coat and mine and run after her. Caprice, wait up! I rush outside to catch up with her. She stops at a crosswalk and barely turns towards me, not able or willing to reply. I'll take silence if it means she'll wait for me. Your coat. You forgot it. Oh, thanks. Sorry. Uh, also, I just realized as well, Olive's wearing the orange scarf. <laughs> I love that so much. I love that they've got the orange scarf on. <laughs> it's such a nice scarf, too. <sighs> she reaches out and takes it off my hands, shrugging it on. I run a hand through my hair. What a mess. Oh, I thought the orange scarf would look intentionally gaudy and awful since you wanted it to have green too, but Loki think it's your favorite scarf they have. Honestly, I love it. I think it's great. Like, the idea of going from, like, like the, the tealy green yellow orange, like, that kind of gradient, feels like an autumn gradient, like, trees. It's like the, the colors of trees. I, I feel like it actually works really well. <laughs> it's actually a really nice scarf. I probably wouldn't wear it myself because I don't have any clothes in those kind of colors. But I, but I, it's, it's a nice scarf. I like it. It suits them well. It's a good one. Also, Josie, hello. Welcome, welcome. How's it going? Nice to see you. Sorry for the old caps. It's okay when it's enthusiasm. <laughs> It's like if every single message all the time is all caps, that might be too much. But for enthusiasm, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with a bit of caps lock. I'm a big fan. <laughs> but uh, glad to see you. I hope you're doing well. Welcome, welcome. Happy Twofold Tuesday. Welcome to um, emotional devastation. <laughs> but it's okay. They're going to work things out. It'll be okay. <laughs> Ah, uh, lot changed since we last chatted. Yeah, it has been a while, but uh, things are going all right for me. I hope things are going okay for you as well. Hope you're holding up all right. I'm mostly uh, just suffering in the heat at the moment because there is a heat wave in the UK and it is extremely warm. I'm very warm and it is a little painful, but it's okay. I'm making it through somehow with the power of my fan blasting directly at me. It's a very nice fan. But yeah, I'm currently enjoying Two Fall. I've just reached Act 3 of Caprice's route. And that's how I feel up there. That's how I feel. <laughs> oh, it's such an incredible game, though. I love this game so much. Ooh, such a good time. Even, even when I'm suffering and in pain, it's still a good time. Well, maybe, like, good is the wrong word. <laughs> But I, I love this game so much. It's so good. Ida, she reaches out and takes it off my hands, shrugging it on. I run a hand through my hair. What a mess. Yeah. 
What am I supposed to do? Should I ask her to stay? Give them another chance? That feels... wrong. At the same time, I don't want her to just go. Nothing can convince me that she should be alone right now, not even Caprice herself. My head hurts, probably from trying to think every possibility through before Caprice can leave again. I've got to relax. Oh, she's... <laughs> the tears in her eyes, no! Oh, the pain. Uh, also... Oh, you recently got married! Oh, congratulations! Oh, congratulations! Oh, I'm so happy for you. That's lovely. That's so funny. We were actually talking about, like, marriages and weddings earlier because, like, a lot of the conflict in this game revolves around marriage as well and family and all that kind of stuff. So it's been, like, there's there's been a lot of, like, conversation tangents talking about things like that. But, oh, congratulations. I'm so happy for you. I hope it was a lovely lovely marriage ceremony oh uh, never heard of this game so this is new to you oh this game is i went into this game thinking it would be good and it has turned out to be so much deeper and more heartfelt than i expected it's it's got such great characters such like an incredible story so many emotions evoked it's a really really good game and if you if you do like visual novels i i recommend it so so highly it's so good i've been having such a blast playing it oh no thank me no thank you no we'll just be in a circle of thanking each other now <laughs> but yeah I'm, I'm so happy to hear that though congratulations The thought, though, of Caprice just being here with tears in her eyes and Olive is just, like, saying nothing and frowning. <laughs> As I pull my hand away from my hair and turn back, I catch Caprice's gaze. Is she crying? Yes, yeah, she is. She quickly breaks eye contact and stuffs her hands in her pockets. Hey. Sorry, I... Please. Olive, I... I really couldn't stand it if you're just putting up with me, too. No. Oh, no. No, I don't want Caprice to feel like this. No. She's just thinking that everyone's just, like, dealing with her because they have to. But that's so untrue. Like... Nobody would stick around her if they didn't actually like her, but she's she's convinced herself otherwise. I'm I'm mm. She's so good, no. Please. Please, you mm. <laughs> Millie Act 3 is all about healing and self-care, so Caprice Act 3 has to be all about an eternal downward spiral. <laughs> That's so true though. Cause Caprice Act 2 was Caprice having a, a great time and things going well and having so much hope and then Millie Act 2 was just like Millie gradually getting worse and worse until she storms out of the house, buys a bunch of beer and sits next to a train track like it's it's <laughs> the, the, the role reversal Ugh. but it's okay, it's okay it's okay, she may be spiraling down but this is a long scarf we can pull her back up. We can pull her back up. It's fine. My entire body goes cold as I realize just how much the concentration was playing across my face. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. Like her crying and just Olive being like, mm, deep in thought. <laughs> no, it's not that at all. I'm so sorry. I love you for you. Mm. I can never just make that up. <laughs> oh, I love them. I love them both. They're so good. And oh, I have to get going. Oh, but thank you for stopping in. I'm glad you were able to, to drop in and say hi. Thank you.
thank you very much. I hope you have a good rest of your day. Thank you for being here. I hope the rest of your days and week and month are also great. <laughs> just say that the notion that she could even be seriously entertaining the thought makes my heart hurt for her even more yeah. that's what I'm saying really I love that gentle smile just like yeah yeah really her shoulders fall a bit almost imperceptibly I don't know what I can do for you, so I guess I'll just ask. Yeah, that, that's the best thing to do. How can I be here for you? I can't read her mind. I can't instinctively know what the best way to comfort my partner is. I hope she knows better than me. I... I don't know how to answer that. Mm. Just being around you helps, though. Can I walk you home, then? Caprice scuffs her shoes against the ground, displacing a bit of snow. She lets the silence trail on. You weren't going home, were you? No. I don't know where I was going to go. I just needed to get out of there, and well, the apartment isn't much better. Do you want to stay over at my place? There it is. Can I? Yes. Always. <laughs> oh. <laughs> this should be such a cute scene and I'm just devastated. I'm just sad. <laughs> We board the afternoon trolley, sharing a number of shopping bags, though her load far exceeds mine. She accompanied me as I picked up some ingredients for dinner tonight, helping me suggest ideas for our next cooking lesson before stepping away to the art supply section. We quietly sit side by side as the trolley takes off, lowly rumbling beneath us. The shopping seemed to help a bit, but She's clearly still struggling to keep her energy up. She closes her eyes and rests her head back. Guess this will be enough for all the free time I've got now. Mm. Do you really not plan on having any more meetings before the semester starts? And I guess now we know why there weren't any more art club meetings in Millie's Act 3. <laughs> now we know. Great. Yeah, the, 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 the gentle, the, the gentleness in her voice when she was just like, can I? Yeah. Thank you. I don't know. We'll see. It's not that long anyway. Mm. My heart sinks for her. She was looking forward to starting up the meetings again. Well, so long as that's what you want. Mm. Yeah, it's fine. It's better to let them loose than keep them holed up if they didn't really want to be there. No. Mm. I think if Eileen and Wallace actually didn't want to go, they wouldn't. Nah. Hmm. Nah? Her reply is so short and definitive, it surprises me. I go to press her for more, but she sighs and shakes her head before continuing. I can't help but feel like I've maybe been really stupid. No. Mm. No. Like her enthusiasm is such a it's such a positive part of her. It's such an intrinsic part of Caprice. I don't want her to lose that. I don't want her to lose that energy, that passion, that determination. I like, all this time, everybody's been saying exactly what they felt. Why did I keep bothering with it? Ever since I started the thing, Allison begrudgingly joined because I begged her to. Eileen, because I took over the room she was using to study. Wallace, just for Eileen, and Allison, and even then. 
Despite everything, nothing about Caprice's voice or demeanor is angry. Instead, she's speaking slowly, drawing out each idea after a moment of pause to really consider it. How long has she felt this way? She leans against me as she continues, and I hear the strain in her voice. I thought maybe Eileen and Wallace really don't like coming to the club after all. But they kept showing up anyway, so I just pretended otherwise. Mm. I was so desperate for them to stay, to enjoy the club. I wanted them to love it as much as I do. So I kept playing along and hoping maybe they'd change their mind and suddenly be happy to be there. How long have they just been humoring me? Now, see, I think they are happy to be there. They just show it in a different way. Like Wallace, for sure. Like, if, if he didn't like the club, he just wouldn't show up. Why do I keep thinking I can make anything better just by trying harder? When people obviously don't want anything no. to do with me. No, no, no. I love Caprice so much. I hate that she's feeling like this. She is so lovely. She is such a little ray of sunshine. Seeing her like this is so just wrong. It's just wrong. She buckles, her voice cracking with choked sobs. When the tears begin falling, really falling, and her defenses are gone, she can't stop. I pull her close. Her face is hot with tears, and I brush her hair away as she shuffles closer. She's trying to keep quiet, masking her cries into my shoulder as the trolley continues on. Any words I might have had are forgotten. The core problem isn't Eileen or Millie or anything to do with the art club or even Christmas. Her optimism, her tenacity, her belief that anything will work out if you put enough heart into it. It's her hating the part of herself that made me fall in love with her. <laughs> That's exactly what I was saying. That's what I was saying. Just her passion, her exuberance, just the things that make Caprice just... That make you just smile whenever she's around. That's... Uh, she shouldn't hate that part of herself. It's so beautiful and important. And I hate that she can't see that. Oh, what the... Oh, my friend Caprice. We sit there, together, as she lets out what's been bottled up for months. I close my eyes and focus on her, ignoring every time the trolley stops and people leave or sit down, rubbing her back. I don't know how much time has passed when her short, painful breaths have slowed into a regular rhythm and her weeping has eased into quiet sniffling. For whatever it's worth, I'm really happy to be in the art club. I'm not even in the art club. I'm, I'm, I'm an observer here. I'm not even in the art club, but I'm still happy. <laughs> mm. I love being there with you. I love how much you care about everyone and everything. I'm so grateful that mm. you kept reaching out to me. Because my life is better for having you in it. She doesn't respond. But I feel her squeeze my hand and give a tiny nod. I kiss the top of her head. We've definitely missed our stop, but neither of us comment on it. Instead, after a few more minutes of silence, Caprice begins pointing out how pretty the city looks as the afternoon dips into sunset. Ow. Okay, next day. Oh. Wanna go out somewhere? Mm. Oh my goodness. A cheese! Hello! Welcome, anime. Kind of. Yes? Yes. Hello! Welcome! <laughs> like where? The aquarium? 
Caprice lounges about on my sofa, leg propped over the back of it. I take a seat next to her and join her in staring out the window. After coming home yesterday, we ended up making some cheese and vegetables for dinner. Uh, cheese, why did I say cheese? Chicken, <laughs> I read the cheese in the username. I, I've got cheese on the brain now. We ended up making some chicken and vegetables for dinner before crashing on the couch to watch a movie. By the end of the night, Capri seemed back to her usual self. Her bright eyes this morning are a relief to see. She writes herself as she ponders my question using her newfound energy. Mm. Where are we going? I do have work later today, so I can't really go anywhere too far. That's in like four hours. We could do a whole road trip in that time. Do something crazy, adopt a dog, dye our hair. This is the second time now she's bringing up dyeing her hair, which is so funny. <laughs> Just, just dye your hair already, you two. Just, just do it. Th that again? <laughs> yeah. I don't have a car. That shouldn't be enough to stop you. I swear, <laughs> I think you'd be hibernating here all winter if it weren't for me. I'd at least go out for groceries. True. Wow, really living. Hey, it's something. She playfully claps her hands together. I give a snort of amusement and sit up straighter. Well, what? Did you want to do more shopping? No, she wants to dye her hair. <laughs> nah, no. Caprice fiddles a bit more, seeming to think over something. We only have one semester left, huh? Mm. Yeah, thank goodness. Hmm. She pouts a little. I look away from the window and towards her, trying to gauge what she's thinking. I guess it makes sense you're looking forward to it. This has been a heck of a year for you, huh? I guess you could call it that. For me, I... Uh, never mind. Oh? Huh? Oh, what's up? Actually, I think I better get going. No, what? But... Where are we going out? Huh? She hops up off the couch, grabbing her hat and donning it without pause as she continues. Don't worry, um, I'm actually going to crash back home after all. My mom and I's place. Oh. My expression must accurately portray how out of left field this is, and my worry, because Caprice quickly tones down the energy to give me a kiss on the cheek. Really, it's fine, Ollie. It's just something dumb. Oh? I gotta get better at dealing with things on my own, too. Oh, I... Uh... You don't have to leave to do that. I know. But, well, you have work soon, and it's just... dumb. It's not dumb if you care about it. I don't care if it's dumb. Mm-hmm. Also, there's nothing wrong with things being dumb. Sometimes the dumbest things are the funnest things, like... <laughs> because you are the best. He. <laughs> Despite her cheeriness, everything feels wrong. My heart sinks. Is it because we're in our last semester? Something tells me she wouldn't tell me even if I asked. Caprice gives me a soft look. Not a smile, but not a frown either. A look like she's asking me to just drop it for now. I bet she's gonna go get her hair dyed. I bet that's the dumb thing. I bet she's like, I know it's dumb, I just wanted to, to change my hair. Okay, do you want me to go with to drop you off? Nah, I'll be okay, but I'll text you as soon as I'm in. Only if you get a minute. Can I call you when I'm off work? Yeah. 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 Without further fanfare, I get up off the couch and help her collect her few things. The art supplies she grabbed are still sitting in the bags untouched. And the few clothes draped over the back of what uh and the few clothes draped over the back of one of the kitchen chairs. I throw in a bag of cookies she's been snacking on since she arrived. She says they don't sell them at her usual grocery store, but I think she just likes them. We share a quick kiss before she heads off. I close the door behind her. 
My hand rests on the doorknob for a few moments longer before I shuffle back to the couch. Why does this feel so bad? It doesn't, it doesn't feel good. Like, they went from let's go out somewhere to, um, actually, I'm, I'm going. Like, that, that doesn't feel like a positive thing. I'm worried. It's hard to shake the feeling that I did something wrong. I know Caprice would tell me if I did, or at least I think she would. I hope she would. Even with her reassurances, seeing her up and leave so fast the moment her mood turned a bit, I feel my heart weighed down in my chest. Maybe I can talk this out. Not with Caprice, since she wants some space, but... <sighs> After an extra second to think it over, I pull my phone out of my pocket, fully collapsing onto the couch as I hit the speed dial. Oh my goodness. Seeing Olive like this just... Hello? Oh, Mom. Oh, of course. Yes. When you need someone to talk to. Yes. Time to call Mom. Yeah, Caprice with dyed hair in the next scene. It's like, yeah, it's probably dumb. Just wanted to have control over something. I think that's exactly what it is. Or just like... A, something to just like make a bit of a change. Like things are, are stuck in this horrible rut for so long. Changing just one element is like something she can feasibly do like for herself. With that. Anyway, phone call with mom. Hey, mom. What are you up to? Oh, Ollie. Hi. How are you? The breakfast rush just ended, so I'm running out to grab more eggs. Huh. Can you believe they only ordered 15 dozen for the week? This week! Like, everyone and their grandma won't be treating themselves to a cozy breakfast after the holidays. Oh, right. <laughs> Sorry, I'll call back. No. Or just, you know. See you in a few hours. <laughs> I try to laugh it off. Not my worst performance. There's an extra pause before she responds. The birthday girl? Wait, wait, is it August's birthday? Is that, is there a birthday I've missed? I, I'm really bad with birthdays anyway. July 30th. Oh, I love that. Wait, that's so good. Happy birthday, August. Oh my goodness. Yay! <laughs> I need to write down all of the birthdays of my favorite fictional characters and just put them in the calendar of my phone so that I remember them all. <laughs> Olive? What's going on? Ah. Uh-oh. The full first name comes out. Her tone and pace changes instantly. I can almost picture her slowing down her brisk pace, looking around and dropping everything she was doing to focus on this call. She really is too good at catching when I'm not feeling 100%. Uh, July has 31 days. If that helps. Is it uh, August 1st? Is that... Olive's birthday? Is that to be two days? Yeah, two days. Nice! Okay, well, I know in time now. Time to finish my fan art of Olive wearing a silly little propeller umbrella hat. Propeller, not propeller, an umbrella hat. <laughs> oh, Olive's birthday is August 1st because they're August number one. Perfect. I love that. I love that. That's really good. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> she really is too good at catching when I'm not feeling 100%. It's... Dumb, I want to say. Knowing how that sounds firsthand now, I take a deep breath and start over. Mm-hmm. <laughs> now you want to see Olive in a propeller hat. <laughs> yeah, I meant to say umbrella hat because, like, I've... I had a moment of just imagining them wearing like one of those hats 
which has got like the the big umbrella attached to it so they can like avoid the rain while they're driving driving riding their bike <laughs> but i could imagine it being the kind of thing where caprice would buy it caprice would buy them that kind of hat with an umbrella and just be like hey so now you can hold an umbrella up without having to hold it isn't that cool and olive would just be like okay i will wear it for you good times oh you have all the the character birthdays noted down i should do the same i should do the same i need to do that i need to mark down everyone's birthday all right it's caprice uh, do you have a second she listens quietly i try to convey all the information as concisely as possible the fight how christmas went the art club and then this morning Still, as much as I try not to, I, I know I'm rambling. I just want to help her. I'm trying to just be there for her, but I don't know if it's enough. She started saying some really sad stuff about feeling like her personality is pushing people away. I love her. I love every part of who she is, but... My voice trails off, and I feel the stress of it all wash over me in a wave that I can't stop. I try to keep my voice together as tears well up. I just don't know what to do. She... She really does her best. Mm. I hate that I can't show her that it's not her fault, that things aren't working out. She's being so unfair to herself. She is! She's being so mean to herself. She's amazing. At the very least, I want her to know it, but I can't even do that. I don't know what to do. My mom shuffles somewhere on the other end of the line. When she speaks again, it's quiet. She must have moved somewhere more private while I was talking. Oh, Ollie. You are being so hard on yourself. Oh, the the irony here of Olive being like, I feel so bad that she's being so mean to herself, but they don't realize they're being mean to themselves too. Like, they keep talking about like, I don't know what to do. I need to do more. I'm not doing what I should. Stop being mean to yourself, Olive. It sounds to me like you really love Caprice, and she really loves you. Why else would she always reach out for you first? Right! Listen, dear. <laughs> You've always been the type to stop at nothing to try to help the people you love. Mm. I'm taken aback. Her voice takes on a lecturing tone. Whether it's you burning yourself out on school and work to try to make me proud, or feeling bad because your girlfriend is going through a hard time. You care so, so much. Mm. Please be kinder to yourself. Yeah, please. That's mom. Weaving life advice into reminders of her love. It wasn't that long ago I was on the same couch calling her about failing the semester. She's right, I'm back in the same situation as before. It's like, cause like the first thing I thought when I saw this CG was like, it's such a parallel to the start of the game. Of them lying down on the couch. And now it's happening again, but for a different reason. And it's... Uh, uh. Also, Kura Syllabus, hello, welcome, welcome to emotions. Welcome, welcome, we're having a time. Oh, I, I, everyone deserves so much, they deserve the world. And it's so painful that they don't have it yet, they, they deserve everything. Okay, mom, I'll try. But I, mm -hmm. I can't promise I'll stop trying to help in any yeah. way I can. We promised, after all. At Christmas, we promised to take care of one another. I can't let that go to waste. Oh, 
I know, Olive. Mm. I'm sure that's part of why Caprice loves you. <laughs> it is. Oh, it's almost midnight. You should sleep. Oh, thank you for stopping in either way. Thank you for the lurk. But I hope you sleep well. I hope you enjoy this lovely, um, calming bedtime story <laughs> to, to, to drop to sleep with. But I hope you sleep well. Thank you for, thank you for being here. I uh, wanted a call back to the first scene in both act threes. Yeah, because I, I remember the silhouetted Olive families as well, like the first scene. I love that. I love that so much. It it really is. It's so powerful. In like the, the best kind of way. I love it. I love it. It's so... Uh. Just remember to give yourself a little slack. You can't fix everything just by trying hard enough, mm -hmm. right? Life has a way of working things out. The most you can do is your best. And your best is good enough. Your best is good enough. Yeah. <laughs> I love you, Mom. Love you too, sweetie. See you for the afternoon shift? Mm -hmm. I'll be there. Yay. She hums a little note of affirmation, and after another quick round of goodbyes, we hang up. It'd be dishonest to say the call made me feel entirely better, but it's at least given me enough energy to drag myself up off the couch and make myself productive. I make my way to the kitchen and start on some responsibilities I've been slacking on the past couple days. Things I'd never normally leave unfinished, but would do so a hundred times over for Caprice's sake. As I'm washing the dishes that have piled up in the sink, my phone buzzes a few times. Caprice's trademark machine gun texting style. <laughs> I'm up safe, hearts. I love you. Thanks for being here for me. Oh. I smile and reply with a suitable number of green heart emojis in return. It's hard to accept, but I hope my mom is right. I hope this is enough. Your best is definitely good enough, Olive. <laughs> yeah. How much is an appropriate number of green heart emojis? I feel like appropriate for Caprice would just be like five texts worth. Honestly. Personally. But knowing all of it's probably like the exact same amount of hearts that Caprice sent. <laughs> I think they would just be like, okay, Capri sent me five hearts, I'm sending five hearts back. <laughs> oh my goodness, my room is 30 degrees Celsius. Oh boy. It's hit the 30 mark. Ow. <laughs> The word of today's stream is him. <laughs> it is. It is. That is that is the, the overlaying emotion of today. Uh, the, the word of today's stream is not actually a word. It's every noise I make when I'm in pain. <laughs> For a mercy, work was quiet today. I was preparing to just go through the motions, head home, make a quick dinner, then lay in bed with my phone till I passed out. The text message I received at the tail end of my shift had other plans for me, though. The apartment complex I find myself in is like night and day compared to my own. Even the hallways manage to impress me with how tidy they are. This is Eileen's place. What's this gonna be? I'm a little scared. Uh, I don't know how I'm... I think this stream today may end up being a slightly shorter one than usual. Because... I know I said I was okay when I've got the fan like pointing straight at me, but I'm, I'm starting to feel the heat now. The, the heat is really starting to get to me now. Oh, I just accidentally pulled the keycap off my keyboard. Oopsie. <laughs> But the heat's starting to get to me a bit now, so I'm thinking it's probably not a good idea to push myself too much. But it's okay, because there's so many Tuesdays 
still to come, like for all of time, forever. <laughs> oh, thank you for the hydrate as well. Can I have a sippy? Yeah, honestly, it's it's always just so painful in summer because all I want to do is stream. I want to stream so much. I want to do so many streams, but I have to limit it because of the heat. And I really hate that. Like, I would love nothing more than to just be like streaming constantly this week. But the weather's gonna be even worse tomorrow than it is today. My bedroom is at 30 degrees Celsius in the room. And I kind of just have to suffer. It's it's painful. But it's like I, I just want to keep playing games. I want to play them. But I think what I'm what I'm gonna decide on is I'll finish this this scene until the scene changes. And then I will save it for next time. Hopefully this is a fairly long scene though, so I'm, I'm not just ending in like a minute. <laughs> but yeah, I'm, I'm gonna make sure to look after myself. I, I need to not push myself too much in the heat because I, I do suffer a lot. I'm like more sensitive to heat than some people are. I can always tell when I have, when I have overheated slightly. I need to look after myself. <laughs> Just one more scene. Just one more scene. That's what they always say. It's the problem. I always go like, I'll just do one more thing. I'll just make it a short stream. I'll just do one little thing and then I just keep going. But uh, I, I do need to... I do need to look after myself. I gotta be careful. Anyway, here we go. Outside Eileen's place. Double checking the door number on my phone. I give the one in front of me a good knock. After a moment, it opens, with Wallace there to greet me. Hi. Hey. He extends his head a bit out the door, looking around briefly before bothering to respond to me. Hi. Capri's not with you? No. I opt for shaking my head rather than a verbal reply. His tone is as deadpan as it normally is, but... I can't help but feel a little agitated about the question. Wallace seems generally nonplussed by my answer as he opens the door to let me in. What is this about? Cat! Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. <gasps> Even if the hallway left a good impression, I didn't expect the apartment to be quite this high-end. When Alison texted me saying she wanted to invite everyone over for dinner, I couldn't help but wonder how she planned to cram everyone into a tiny apartment. Something I feel dumb for even considering now. <laughs> this is quite a large apartment, huh? Oh, Olive! Feel free to hang your coat up and find a seat wherever. We don't have a dining table, but... No one's eating a thing till everyone's here. We're missing your plus one. Mm. Hmm. <laughs> he decided that after Allison moved in, Eileen would probably not have paintings of half-naked women all over her walls anymore. <laughs> oh, I love the thought of that. The thought of Eileen awkwardly being like, um, let's replace this picture. And Allison just as awkwardly would be like, oh no, you don't, you don't have to change it for, for my sake. I'm fine with with it the, the, with the, it's okay <laughs> oh very sweet that is like cats though <laughs> i almost didn't notice eileen in the background hunched over the stove her voice cutting through the sizzling of whatever it is she's currently working on she's probably not showing mm. what why? It's a long story. She decided this morning to head back to her mom's apartment for a day or two. Yeah, but I mean, in all fairness, this is probably the prime opportunity for Olive to actually let them know what's been going on. Because, like, these three don't really know anything. Caprice just, like, bounded in normal as usual. They were doing the same things normal as usual. Caprice runs off in tears. Like, they don't know. They don't know what's happened. <laughs> oh. I see. Hmm. Hmm. 
the deflation of her face is immediate and severe. Honestly, I feel like playing this game helps me realize just how many noises I make. Like, emotional noises. Like, I don't say words, I just make sounds. I'm just like, hmm. <laughs> I do it so much without even realizing. Well, there's the entire point of the night up in smoke. Oh, was this meant to be like a cheer up caprice kind of thing? That's so sweet. Oh. I'm sorry. You know it's a dire time when even Wallace and Eileen seem visibly downtrodden. I suppose this was meant to be their attempt at atoning for yesterday's meeting. Well, I won't send you two home without anything, at least. Give me a couple minutes. Like Allison said, just find a seat wherever. <laughs> yeah, twofold is a pain delivery noise generator. Yes. That's exactly it. What do I think of twofold? Uh, my review of twofold is oh, mm, oh, mm, oh, hmm, uh, oh, uh. there. That's my review. Thank you very much. <laughs> right, how can I transcribe that for the Steam review? <laughs> Allison and I share the couch, with Wallace off to the side in his own chair. Eileen comes around and passes out our meals, a modest dinner, consisting of various veggies and strips of beef mixed into some rice. After passing the bowls around, she finds her seat next to Allison, opposite of me. You could have said something earlier. Well, nobody asked. <laughs> Probably contains at least one small keyboard smash. <laughs> yeah, just a, a little key smash. She doesn't need to look up from her food for me to tell she's directing that squarely at me. How <laughs> did I say that out loud? Yeah, that's, that's exactly what I said. But also, like, the, the, the tears welling up emoji. Actually, no, like, my review... Hold on, here we go, here we go. I've, I've got my review written. Who's ready? Who wants to see it? This is my twofold review. <laughs> Wait, I forgot one. Also this one. Stick this one in the middle. <laughs> there, that, that's, that's my twofold review, thank you. <laughs> Perfect. She doesn't need to look up from her food for me to tell she's directing directing that squarely at me. When would I have had the chance exactly? Even if I knew about this earlier than an hour ago, she only mm. made her decision this morning, and I had work today after the fact. Yes, yeah, stand up for yourself, Olive. No response, not even a grunt or sigh. The food's good, but it's hard to believe the silence in the room is a result of people savoring their dinner. Christmas didn't go well, I imagine. You can say that again. Not at all, no. <sighs> she doesn't ask for elaboration. The atmosphere of the situation is enough for her. We couldn't have known how bad it was, though. No need to beat yourself up over how yesterday went down. <sighs> There's absolutely a need to beat ourselves up over it. Even if Christmas went perfectly and things were fine, maybe we should just... I don't know, be kinder in general? I love Allison. I love Allison. Me too. Me too. I'm always... I am such a staunch advocate for not being, like, jokingly mean too much. Because I feel like it is so easy to, like, internalize mean comments. Even if it's, like, self-deprecating humor. Like, if, if you're just being mean to yourself as a joke there can be points where like you kind of internalize it and it stops being a joke and i i have dealt with that before i've had a lot of moments of like making like jokes that put myself down 
and I started like genuinely putting myself down because of it. So now I'm I'm a very fierce advocate of let's be nice to each other cuz being nice feels nice and smiling feels good. <laughs> very simple it's a very simple approach but i'm just like be nice to people because it feels nice and it's nice and everyone happy <laughs> like i still do joke around from time to time like everything in moderation there are some people i am way meaner to in a joking sense because it's different in that way but yeah i'm, I'm just like i just like being nice to people because i want people to be nice to me <laughs> That's all there is to it, honestly. Eileen and Wallace wince at the accusation. The holidays are one thing, but yesterday's meeting was the final straw. You guys sounded so eager to wash your hands of her. Is it really that surprising how hurt she was? There's nothing we haven't joked about mm -hmm. before. I never would have guessed she was so worked up about that. And that's the whole point, too. Like, if it's just a joke, even if it just keeps happening. Like, it makes it harder to talk about. Because, like, if you have that kind of, like, jokey friendship the whole time, when it starts getting to you, how do you say that? How do you go, like, actually, I know we've been like this for so long, but it's kind of starting to hurt me now. It's so easy to just be like, well, it was fine before. Why is it not fine now? Like, fight back against it a little bit. It makes it so much harder to speak up on past that point. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, normalizing it makes it harder to realize when it starts to go too far. And I feel like especially with something like jokey being mean to somebody, um, it's usually gotten past the point where it's too much before you even realize it. Like you might not even realize how much it's getting to you until it's gotten really bad. And that makes it harder as well. It's a lot of stuff about boundaries, figuring out boundaries, like what, like not, never just like putting up with something because it's always been that way and it should be normal. Like look out for yourself, look after yourself. You'd be surprised. Mm. You'd know best there, I guess. Mm. Throughout our back and forths, Alison aimlessly taps at the edge of her bowl with her fork in reflection. She eventually puts the bowl down on the table in front of us, seemingly tired of pretending to poke at it. We've been terrible. You were fine. It was Wallace and I who... Who didn't consider her feelings. Same as me. After so long, all those mean-spirited jokes just felt... normal, but... I should have. Should have, would have, could have. It's. It's easy to recognize it after the fact. It's. When things are so normalized, when it is so normal, you don't realize. So it's not your fault. I'm just glad they're recognizing it now. She stops to collect herself, but doesn't let it last, not wanting to lose her momentum. We all knew the holidays were going to be stressful at a bare minimum. Then, as soon as we came back from them, everyone laughs about not wanting to be there? How else could it have gone? Yeah. Well, it wasn't the first time, and she'd always let it yeah. run off her back before. Mm hmm There shouldn't have been a first time. She stops herself with a deep breath. When she speaks again, her voice is noticeably quieter. Qu noticeably quieter. Uh, uh Kakasara Himitsu, thank you for the follow. Welcome. Welcome on in. Welcome to the stream. Welcome to uh, Deep Emotions. Uh, please be nice to people. Treat others how you want to be treated. Um, be, be nice, the stream. Welcome. Thank you for following. Hope you enjoy your time here. You're going to call me silly, but I really do think we owe her more than that. <sighs> Eileen, you and I would be entirely different people without her. It's true. It's so true. Ali spitting facts. It's so true. It's like, I, I really do identify so much with Alison. I feel like I have so much in common with her. She reminds me of a, a younger me. <laughs> I pronounced your name correctly. Yes, let's go. 
I'm glad I took a second to read it out. I was like, I want to make sure I pronounce this properly. But uh, welcome, thank you for the follow. I hope you're doing well. Welcome to Twofold Tuesday. Featuring everyone realizing that being jokingly mean to people can sometimes turn into just being mean to people. <laughs> Mm -hmm. She can't even say anything because it's true. I know you don't have anything quite like that, Wallace, but... No, no. I get it. Yeah. And as for you, Olive... She turns to me, giving me the first good look at the sadness in her eyes. I'm sorry about how you were left to deal with the fallout. Mm -hmm. Being there for your partner is a part of what a relationship is. But you shouldn't have to clean up our mess when you're just trying to enjoy your time together. That's okay. You're right. <laughs> it's just part of the job description. I give her as sincere a smile as my heart can muster. It may be weak, but it seems to do its job. She leans in and picks her bowl back up from the table, finding her appetite again as she takes a forkful of rice. If it's too late to patch things up now... Then we'll just have to do our best to start this next semester off on the best foot possible. Yes. I can get behind that. No objections. Life returns to Allison's eyes as the others chime in. It looks like the trio of art club seniors have made up their minds. Olive, I imagine you'll talk to her before we get a chance. If you do, mm. would you mind letting her know we love her, please? All of us. Oh. <laughs> I start digging into my own bowl as the rest of the room slowly begins resuming their own meals. First chance I get. Promise. Oh, let her know we love her. The Alice. The befriend Allison. I did it. We did the Allison friendship route. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. Oh, Allison is so sweet. I love her. She's so good. She really does remind me of myself in so many ways. Like, my myself from, like, five or so years ago. But yes, with that, my room is up to 30.2 degrees Celsius. So what I'm going to do is we're going to have a little save here. Caprice and everything is fine. We made it through. And I am going to leave it at that for now and hopefully cool my room down a bit. I really hope I can. Desperately praying that I can bring down the temperature somehow. Also, Sanya Mita, thank you for the hydrate and posture check. Have a sippy. Let me have a big stretch as well. I know it's a, a little bit sooner than I usually am my stream at. I usually aim to go for four hours because I feel like four hours is a really nice amount of time to get a decent amount done whilst also having time to just chat about random stuff too but the heat really is so bad at the moment I need to I need to make sure I don't give myself heat stroke over anything else because <laughs> if I make myself ill it'll be even less streams so I gotta be careful Yes, oh, thank you for taking all of your heat away. You'll never forget my sacrifice. Yes, see you next Tuesday. All right, hold on. Let me... Let's head on over here and find a raid target. Let's see who's around to send a raid to. Who is on? Who's on? I feel like there's a lot of people who generally start streaming when I usually end. So there aren't as many people as usual. About. Oh no, there's a few. Oh, actually, no, there are quite a few people online, I know. Ooh. Wait, I can raid Peachy. I'm gonna raid Peachy. I'm gonna raid Peachy. I haven't raided her in a while. But, uh, she's lovely. Uh, Seraphim Angel. Banished angel VTuber, the guardian angel of Earth, who was kicked out of heaven and forced into a human vessel. Uh, she's currently playing Wind Waker, Legend of Zelda. And she's an amazing artist. She's done art of me before, and it's so cute. Like, her, her art style is so... 
I don't know how to describe it properly. She has like a very like a rounded, gentle art style. It's like so specifically her art style and I love it so much. But yeah, she's playing some Wind Waker at the moment, so I'm gonna send you over her way. Oh, thank you for stream. Thank you for being here. Thank you all for joining me on this really warm Twofold Tuesday. I wish I could play more, but I, I can tell I'm getting to the point now where I will possibly make myself ill if I keep going any longer, so I gotta look out for myself. Yeah, soft and squished. Very fluffy, yeah. It is a very, it's a very soft, like, you know how some art is like super like sharp? Hers is like very like rounded. Like I'm, I'm really describing it in like the weirdest way possible, but I just, I really love her art. Everything about it is so good. But yeah, she's playing Wind Waker at the moment, uh, Legend of Zelda. And I have not played this game in years, but it's so nice to see it. It's the first Zelda game I actually played. <laughs> back in the day, back on the GameCube. But yeah, I'm gonna send you over her way. Please send all of the love from me. We got the Twofold Tuesday raid message. If you're subbed, we got comfy. If not, we have hearts. And we will send all of the love and none of the heat in that direction. And I will hopefully go and cool down a bit. We'll see how it goes. I hope I can. But yes, that is it from me for now. I'll be back again on Friday for some more Divinity. But uh, I'm taking the, the rest of like the midweek off streaming because of how hot it's going to get. So please, please wish me luck surviving. Because I think tomorrow is going to be hotter than today. I'm terrified. I'll make it. I'll make it through. <laughs> but yes, thank you so much, everyone, for joining me today. And until next time, bye-bye.